Right, this is going to be another episode of Hot Take Point Made with the boys, as usual. But on this show, we are known to get a bit shirty, which if you don't know, is actually English slang for when people get sort of a bit like pissy with each other or like you argue with people. And of course, that is the whole point of this show. But I mean, we're literally getting shirty because as you can see on the screen, me and Maui are wearing our Into the Air t-shirts. I've got one that's sort of like a Japanese pastoral tree design or whatever. Maui's got like a palm tree fitting in with the branding of being the Maui snake, etc. And you too can avail yourself of this apparel by going to intothem.com slash LFN, which at any time what we have this feature running, we'll get you 10% off everything on their store. They have printed shirts like this. You can get, by the way, a bundle of three of them for $61.95. They have basic tees, just high quality, like single color, black, white, etc. Gray, I'm guessing. You can get three of those for $52.95. So obviously you can save money and it's a great way to support us. And that's it. I actually think the product's pretty good too. Like I actually have enjoyed, by the way, one thing I find fantastic, I don't know when you've checked the site, Maui, there are so many different options as well. The amount of actual designs, for example, on the printed ones, is incredible right there's loads of stuff on that site oh yeah yeah there's tons of designs i have some more shirts shipping to me i know people see right. me wearing the same one but sure. like no I, i've had to pick a couple other ones and uh they're as in like i wanted to there's sure. the, there's a couple designs where it's just like once they get washed a few times they also still maintain their color really oh, nicely right. i don't right. know if that i don't know if that's happening with yours but yeah like mine yeah. Like every everything about it just lasting is just really surprising in a very pleasant way no, I will say, like, I, the other thing I expected was, like, the print itself will start. To, nothing's actually done that at all. Like, the design's absolutely perfect. I haven't got any damage whatsoever to mine. I've washed it, like, probably five or six times at this point. Obviously, I've bought it on a bunch of shows. By the way, it's not just that LFN sponsors the podcast. Also, right now, until the 8th of July, they have their 4th of July sale for all you Americans, if quite frankly, anyone. So the cool thing about that one is that already is 30% off, but you can use our code as well. It stacks, so you'll get 40% off anything on the store. By the way, it's not just T-shirts. There's all sorts of other apparel. Check out the site. Thank you to Into the M and their wonderful T-shirts. Right. Who is the first person who wants to do a hot take? By the way, before we start, I will just say, like, if I'd have had, like, budget for this, maybe we could have done something more high skill. But, like, obviously, I don't know if it'll be a topic on this show, but, you know, let's just commemorate the moment Hooksy was fired from G2. I mean, technically he was Bench, <laughs> but we all know Bench just means you're about to be shipped out to enjoy Vietnam. You know what I mean? Like, he's done, he's out. I will say, in some ways, some would say, you know... There's the two jokes you obviously make. One, that's about half of the pot takes ruined for the rest of the next year because obviously no. he was like he was basically the fourth character on this show. He was like the nemesis of our show, I guess. And then also, like I mean, a lot of takes in the past. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do for the next episode. I'll go and look what were the hooksy hot takes. Was there any hot takes? Did he? Did we ever? Because that would be a good time to take stock. Did he ever fulfill the takes that we had about hooksy or G two? The, the best take that now Kassad can doesn't have to fulfill is that he can. He can talk to Nico. Oh, he can just be friends Remember? with Nico again. Yeah, true. Yeah, he can. He can yeah. be friends with Nico, which is great. By the way, I didn't still want to, to this day, this all personal. probably it's still to this happen, right? Still to this day, not even. By the way, I'll just point this out again. One, not even really a hot take. Just one of the maddest things anyone's ever said on this show. It wasn't even really a hot take. It was just. It was just a mad threat, really. In some ways. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's pretty obvious what happened. And Nico was like, "Yeah, I don't want to lose such a great friend like Asad is." Okay. And yes. because he has all the power, he's making all the moves. He obviously removed right. books, and it's yes. just the way it is right okay. but i do think that maui because today that we are recording this he's like more cheerful in a better mood than he usually is okay so he might take the, the lead and All get right. us into the first hot okay. take okay oh no but the thing is i feel like the pressing matter is is the g2 stuff and i know you'd have some good ones i okay we'll get back to it then we'll get back to it then because i have other takes in the space that i gotta make uh you wanna stop, this maui? one yeah, yeah. This one pains me. This one pains me to make this. Come on. Uh, because I obviously overrated this guy joining one other Russian super team. Now he's joined this one and seemingly ruined it. And I, I just have to say, I, I think now at this point, it is evident beyond reasonable doubt that electronic is just flat out some kind of rasputin mind controller like oh, like goodness. he's a team he's been a team ruiner he's okay. been a team ruiner like why is he convincing jame at this point that he should in game lee like this is there's some kind of like we know how like back in 2017 or what or maybe after the boston major nico convinced everybody on phase that he should be the in-game leader okay. much to his own demise okay. because of his huge ego had he had at the time i think nico's improved as a person since then but electronics seems to be going through the exact same phase that nico was 
back seven years ago. Like, what what's going on? Like, can this guy seriously just let his in-game leaders work for a little bit longer and not demand just the, these results? And just like, like, sure, Cloud9, he wanted to take it up himself. You saw that fail, okay? You you were right there. You were you were in the driver's seat. It failed around you, and now you're slowly taking the reins from James. This guy is actually showing himself to be a bit of a corrosive asset in these team speak conversations. I, I'm not. I'm I'm such a huge fan of Electronic as the player, but clearly as a teammate, this guy okay. has probably been back talking. He's probably just been saying the way you're calling sucks, James. We need to call more like Blade, and it's like. Electronic, your playbook for what Blade had is outdated now by two two ish years. Like you need to like put put those memories away, update yourself, and just believe in your in game leader. Because as it stands right now, every team that you've joined has actually somehow gotten worse. I will say I did feel just in the moment slightly uncomfortable with you saying the words out loud. You were there in Cloud Nine. You had the reins as it failed around you while Kassad was in this call. So. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, anyway, 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 anyway. Show to start I know it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Right, okay, we'll started. have a truce at the beginning. Of the show. Okay, okay. But the the, the thing is, uh, when what he said, what what Maui said, is kind of true in a sense, right? Because he did join Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine was such a prospect team, like that sure. was like the biggest, the next yeah. super team at the end of like was it CS:GO and yep. they had like was it Katowice or Cologne? Uh, the, the I think it was Cologne. Yeah, one was, good like, Cologne run. run. Yep. With Buster. Yeah, yeah, it was just crazy, and everybody was expecting Exile, and you know everybody was like, okay, this is gonna be the team. Then that thing just kind of fell apart completely after a few months. Now he joined VP, and the team is not looking like the the people are thinking that's going to be right They they expected more in a sense right they they, they thought it's going to be again the super team he's joining like the the, the the likes of you know jame and norbert and all these like the good players right now and it's going to be like a super super solid team i don't think they're there obviously i mean everybody can say that but i don't think they're in, in a point where they can say like oh this is again c9 you know crash you know doing it all over again and as far as him goes as as a player who is a team winner I think if, if that's the case, let's say you are right 100% that he is the one making the, the teams worse by his attitude and his like gameplay and whatever the fuck is it. Or maybe he's not calling well, could just be that too, right? Just whatever, right? Yeah. Just just let's make, yeah. uh, for the for the argument's sake, let's make Maui right once, um, you know. You know, just as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. But wow. The, the, no, the thing is like, let's say that that's right. <laughs> Whose fault is it? Is it his fault 100%? Or is it the fault of the organizations that are allowing this shit to happen? The sure. coaches, the IGLs yeah. that are actually like listening to that and just falling under that pressure, crashing under that pressure of electronic talking shit to them. Yes. Like, let's say electronic is that guy, that bad guy that we maybe think we are, he is, right? Maybe he's not, but let's say he is. So he starts talking shit. He starts like uh, second guessing. You straighten it up instantly. Like, hey, mate, you're here to play. You do this, you do this, stick to your role, play your thing. You have your voice. It's going to be heard. It's going to be noted, but you need to shut the fuck up and play. Like, and then after season or two, because you just arrived here, your job is to play and deliver numbers. We paid what? What was the rumor? One million or something? Yeah. You, yeah. You're not being, you're not brought here to talk shit. You're just brought here to brought big numbers. Play. After the two season sets, we can sit down and review everything that we did together. Whose fault was it? Whose you know fault is it now? Who made the bad calls? Who made bad bad plays? And then after that, like if then we can settle the scores, right? But if you talk to me, you know, you talk shit to me during my time as an IGL, you are instantly you and your million dollars are get the fuck out, like all the fucking team. Just get the fuck out. I don't care. Either me or him, it would be in that in that scenario. But let's say, like I said, maybe he is not that guy. Maybe it's something different. Maybe it's systemic thing. Like they removed the coach that was with them for like what four or five years. They're struggling with this player, that player. They cannot find the proper uh, style of of game they used to run in CS:GO. As we know, that CS2 is definitely more dynamic game, right? It's faster, less rounds. Sure. The the saving is a little bit different now. It's like the, their style is not compatible all that much with the style that is being played right now, right? It's just the way it is, the CS is like that. Maybe there is some some something there that needs to be worked on. Maybe it's not Jane. Maybe it's not electronic. Maybe it's something third. Maybe it's the environment. Maybe the the way they practice. Maybe the amount of boot camps. Maybe there is a, a something in the organization that is not on the same page with the players. So we cannot like instantly go and just say like, listen, electronic is the problem. It does seem that way. 
from the outside what we can see like okay electronic joint cloud nine it failed electronic joint bp it failed maybe there is something behind it i wouldn't really like instantly say that like that electronic is the guy who is you know making all these things happen until the end of the season until the end of the december november shanghai or whatever the the the, the last thing in the schedule this year and then i i draw the line under the whole sheet and i see like who did what and who didn't do their job and who is responsible for good good games or bad games or whatever the fuck happened in the previous seven eight months so that's my kind of view of the thing but you know i guess we have to wait and see till the end of the year I think one of the big problems with this whole topic, actually, is that Electronic just doesn't do English language interviews. In fact, it doesn't seem to do interviews in general. Like, when do you ever even see Russian ones translated? Because one of the problems with this topic is, I've never known anyone who was an IGL or kept getting forced into IGL who, de- who never has a, a public opinion about it. Like, I've, has any, I'm, I'm being serious. We've all read a lot of media online. Have you ever read an interview with Electronic about being an IGL? I, I think I vaguely remember one, like, early in Navi. But aside from that, I feel like it's not even a topic I've seen him address particularly so the, the most bizarre thing to me is i don't even really know where his head, his head is at like is this something long term he wants to pursue and he wants to do a la an equal or a twists or whatever right is that the case is it something that he does when he's asked to by his teammates or he loses faith again the reason why i wish i knew that is then i'd sort of have my bearings of where this all starts whereas instead like you say because i'm wondering like is it the org that does it do the other players tell him is it when like like i say does he lose faith himself in the igl because i'd start with this for this particular topic let's just start with him joining vp my first thing I would say to Electronic and VP is, why did you join VP if you want to be the IGL though? Like, essentially, you joined someone else's project, which was almost fully formed. And to me, it's the opposite. You weren't going there to start a new project around you. You're going there to be the last piece that we then win all the tournaments off. In fact, remember the reason why this one was hyped in spite of what happened in Cloud9 is because at least in Cloud9, they had that weird thing where they were like one foot in, one foot out. So initially, they had like Electronic IGL. They still had Shiro, but then no one knew would Electronic be a good IGL. IGL. Then they were like, it's all right. We don't have Shiro, but we got Boomich to IGL. So we don't have the opposite. There was always like a reason that could be like an excuse back then, right? The problem with the VP one is, first of all, you're joining a team that's got an established IGL. In fact, he's won a major, mate. He was the MVP. So you think, right, IGL's taken care of. You look at the team. This is the reason everyone raved about it. Because famously, when people went and they checked, actually, it's one of the rare times in CS history. You almost did do a one-for-one. One. Like, they did actually play a lot of the spots. You'd want electronic to play, as in want, not like you have to. And you look at electronic game even in the dodgy ass cloud nine he was still the best player he was still like a sort of 1.15 rating type player like he was good so you look at that and it looked like a slam dunk it looks like hey as long as he's walking in to be a better version of me isn't this what everyone wants like essentially it looked like there was no downside it's why when i even tried to like theory craft a downside my downside was just like how will jim make use of all the firepower that was like my one angle because obviously a lot of his teams in history actually very thin worked sometimes in spite of firepower sometimes they didn't have sometimes they would have kick up boss the sanji and to dread all in one team you know what I mean like they were working with like not that many star players so that part already is a weird one because I just wonder like I say is it Electronic who wants this or the others because even that in itself is a bit telling because think about this it's Jim himself who's put this rumour out there he's the one saying that this is an option which also makes me wonder because as you alluded to about the timing of this because think about this right it's been Jim's team the whole time as far as we know by the way I've never heard also I'll say publicly I've never heard a player complain about his style I don't know if you can I fucked with it, but I never heard him publicly ever complain or ever cast dispersions. So as far as I know, people like James Style. They think he's a good IGL. Not only is it disturbing that he's seeding the because he's not saying right now Electronic's IGL, but they're seeding the ground for it to happen as though, like, you know, they're they get they're preparing us all for it, like they're gonna make the change. Well, the reason that's so suspicious, the timing, is like you say, they just got rid of their coach who also was there forever. Mate, that starts to make me feel like the team and maybe even Jim, maybe they don't fuck with their style anymore. Maybe they want to change because like firing the coach sounds to me like we've run out of ideas we couldn't get any further with this guy now the idea Jim himself is like I'll step aside that's why I say the last part and this is actually a mystery for me because I just don't know what they're like in the Russian scene is it seems like the Russian scene has a really different perspective on electronic as IGL than all of us. All of us are sort of like, nah, why do it? It's, you know, it's like the whole the thing everyone used to yeah. say to Nico back in the day, or we're saying to Twists now, if you're going to do it. It's like, bro, you're so good yourself. Why not just do that? Why risk losing that and then be an IGL and maybe not be as good at IGL? Because I'd even say that latter part's also the reason this is a move is a bummer for me. It's like, bro, you're just going to tank your game, I think. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I, th- 
I the thing, Electronic was still decent when he was IGL and Navi, but it wasn't like the Electronic who was getting like top five HLTV rating at the end of the year. Like that guy was a fucking monster back in the day. He was like one of the best players in the world. So to me, I also just don't get that aspect of why tank your own game. I'll even say this. I actually wonder if unfortunately, this is something I'll probably do a video about. People knew as a loose like uh, pattern. The real problem also when a star rifler goes to IGL role is how many times they can't come back. Like thus far, Yikinda's never made it back. He's never made it back to what he was for. I would even argue pretty much all of them. The only one who did ever make it back, in my opinion, was actually Nico. And that's because Nico did it like because he had to for a few months. He never really had committed to like I'm an IGL forever now. He just sort of did it for the months before they could get Neo or Adrian or while they were waiting to get calls. He just did it when he had to. And and some of that was online anyway. So to me, He's the only exception. Everyone else has tanked their game. And unfortunately, the classic reason, if you ever talk to those players, Sharks, etc., they'll tell you the problem is before I saw the game as a star player and when I saw it as an endgame leader, sort of the bigger picture of what are all my teammates doing and how does this connect and what... They say it's hard to, like, forget that way. That's the problem. You can't, like, make yourself not think about that and then just go back to looking at a crosshair and run around a corner, you know. So, sadly, I do worry with Electronic. Is this going to tank his game, too? Because I feel like he's another player where the reason it's such a silly move for me is he, look, he looks like another evergreen player, like a Crimps-type player that could just be good for a long time. Like, this guy looks like, by the way, right now, he could just be good for two more years. Just, just equally as good. He could still be, a, still be a very good player. So, I don't get it, mate. The thing is, like, what I don't understand is VP... Uh, let's say that uh, allegedly they paid one million for him, right? Let's stick to that, if that's true. Like, why would you pay a one million dollar for electronic? That's the biggest question. And then one month, two months later, you're discussing like he's going to be the IGL. Is electronic a one million dollar player? Like, take a look at the the, the 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 players right now. How many players you can say that have a value of one million dollars right now? It should probably can only be name, the top like, five in my can opinion. You name, you know? Can you name yeah. 10 of them? Is no, there 10 no, of them? I don't think so. Is there like five, six of them right now, maybe? Maybe. I said Zaivu, yeah. Nico, Monesi. I don't know who else. Donk, well, obviously. Donk, Donk, yeah. Donk, obviously. Maybe Maybe Shiro, even. Maybe Frozen, right? Maybe like Desertion yeah. or something. Depends how far you something want Something like that. Yeah, right? Keserato. You, know, you know, there's a few. Like, let, let, let's say like six, seven players yeah. are worth a million dollars. Yes. Is one of those six, seven players electronic? Has oh, been no. a big he million dollar player for the past what year and a half? No, no, I don't think so, right? Yeah. So that is the question mark for me. Not about like electronic. Obviously, if you are Jamin, I'm not here defending Jamin. Oh no, no, like the thing is, like if you have like, these pieces and you don't make it work, you don't adapt to the game, then it's your fault. Yeah, you shouldn't great. be the captain anymore, right? Great. Obviously, I'm not even blaming electronic because we don't know what's happening. I'm also asking the question of organization. Like, listen, if I, what else could I get for one million dollars? Yes. What can I get that can improve my team? Was it like a one-time purchase of electronic? Or could I like maybe use that money more efficiently to get my team to the next level? Because there are players that are very cheap from their region, even from Russia as well, oh, of course. Like that they can be there and they can fill up that spot. That can deliver same numbers as electronic is doing or even better. So that is the, the, the biggest question right there. Not if electronic is like, you know, the uh, team ruiner or something. But maybe, I don't know. I, mean, oh, I, have don't one know. Last, I don't I, know him personally. I have one last angle for you. The other reason why I think it's inappropriate that he tries to IGL on all these different teams is because when he IGL'd in Na'Vi, the perception went, this is a guy that was basically groomed from day one in his pro career by Blade. He's played with Blade his whole career. That's the system he's always been learning and playing under when Blade was an IGL. Then in Na'Vi, he's his coach. And the idea is, like, that guy's going to, like, lead you into doing his system. By the way, he's not necessarily teaching you to be an all-time IGL. He's just teaching you how to uh, floor general his system. And I'll tell you what, that's the part I wonder about. Because, obviously, if you watch, it's quite clear to me that Blade has is not someone who's using, like, a loose plug-and-play approach. It's why he always even tells people, I need, like, three to six months to get the team up to speed. Like, if you look at his system, it seems very comprehensive. I always say, I do see him as, like, a professor-type figure where he's not trying to teach you what's how best to play today. He's trying to teach you what he thinks the ideal version of CS is, and that's what you're all aiming yeah. for. And I will say, I've always given him credit, when that Na'Vi team was insane, it wasn't just the players shooting people. The style also was very, very, like, tight. Really, like, fucking, he knew exactly... It looked like everyone was following those dossiers to, a, to the team to the letter as it were well here's the reason I bring that up because if you go to a team like Cloud9 first of all they clearly did not have that with Afani it was a very different style that looked a lot more sort of like mid-roundy to me like on the fly and then now in VP they have a totally different style to Navi so I would also say this is Electronic someone who either himself thinks you have to play the Blade way or is that the only way he knows how to play as an IGL because I don't think that's a minor issue like I'll give you the example from Football Cassad, right 
A lot of people made fun of Vincent Company, the legendary mid defensive player, because he went to Burnley and he clearly tried to make them play Guardiola style football. He tried to make them play like Man City. And the reason people made fun of him is because like they got relegated, right? But I always said to people, I don't totally blame him because what he's trying to do there is play what he thinks is like the most optimal style of football. His problem is he doesn't have Man City's team, does he? He has Burnley's team. So it might not work as well. Like that style's gonna be really hard to make work. So I would say a similar analogy. If he's coming to this team and trying to make it like Navi, Maybe it can't work that way. I mean, for a start, you don't have blades. So I would also say that's another detail to throw in there. This isn't an IGL. Like, notice a lot of the other people we listed who were star riflers who became... A lot of them were trying a loose style of calling, you know. They just wanted sort of to, like, make things work and then frag themselves a bit. So I also wonder... This is why, actually... I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. I just wish we actually could really find out what electronic things. I'd love to know... Even if he had a silly opinion, I'd love to know what he thinks. Does he want this? Is he the one pushing for it? Because it feels a bit suspicious that he just keeps getting into this spot every time. I mean, hopefully yeah. he, he tells the story one day. Yeah, right? it'll be awesome. So we can actually hear it so we know exactly what's going on. But yeah, I, I, I do agree with most of the things that you said. It's just, uh, for me, it would be just a, it's just a nonsense that they, they just bought him at all. Like for me, I didn't really agree with that purchase, especially because of the number. But I always talk about these numbers and buyouts. So maybe, you know, we can skip to another, another hot well, take. You want to yes. do the next one? Well, let me let me let me round this out with some numbers on this. This is like so. I, I brought some Go stats ahead. to this whole discussion. Also, the the fact that like when when looking at VP, what I don't see as a problem is their T side calling. If you actually, I I put together like basically all the top twenty teams and put just. Their oh, by the way, Maui, one thing year. I want I want to yeah. ask you a quick question because one thing I think we yeah. have to do. This is where fans are just behind on like the Reddit narratives. They keep yeah. thinking that VP does play like the really old style from CSGO where they run right. every clock. They don't, they do, to be fair, they have tried to do the CS2 better. I agree with Kassad. They know it's a different game. They have tried like up tempo. They've tried rushes even. I've seen them do like a false buy. You just do a rush, which is like the least VP thing of all time. So they did, they have tried like, it's not really the most old school exact style, they, right? I mean, it, yeah, I mean, even at the, the Rio Major when they won the whole thing, at least like once per half, they would run one fast right. thing. So it wasn't the same as their like right. 2020. Like they were slowly evolving every single year. Right. And now, fair. now like they can yes. run a couple, couple quicker plays. Yeah. But I, I wow. want to bring this up that, that they, yeah. That, that is a big deal for them. It took them a while. Yeah, that's a big It took them a while. Okay. Yeah. Of yeah. Hoopsie caught off a little faster. The numbers, the numbers. But okay. To, for the numbers, for the numbers here, it's that I put every, every like top 20 teams. Uh, CT side versus their T side for the year so far. So it's like if you have, you know, a really bad CT side, or like, okay, either way, either way, VP's problem is just not their CT side. In fact, their T side is way better. If you look at all the teams and just have the the delta, the difference between their CT side and T side, VP have one of the most favorable for their T sides. Like their T sides, and they aren't even they aren't even spam picking Anubis or anything like that. They're playing nice. like a lot of this year, they were playing Ancient and they were playing Overpass. Yeah, Those yeah. are the maps they kind of leaned on. And so for them, like, the last thing I look at for VP is really their T sides. It's that you're not getting enough from sometimes individual performers on the CT side. And that's not really like always the biggest IGL captain issue. Like if Electronic for whatever reason thinks that the calling style isn't up to date and James starting to second, second guess himself there. Like, no, the T side's fine. Like leave that as it is right now. What you need to actually worry about is making sure that everybody's gelling on CT side and everybody's helping each other. Also, I will say on CT side, I think they probably do save just a little bit too much still on that side of the map. So I, I'm, I really don't think that like electronic right now has done now in two consecutive teams brought forward ideas that have just kind of thrown the entire team out of whack, made them lose confidence in themselves. Uh, and at this point, like he basically left cloud nine and that team is just decimated. Now he, he's walked away from a complete car wreck and he's walking away. Like it's fine. Nothing's nothing's like, it's a million dollar buyout to get him out of that car wreck. And he's probably one of the main comp uh, proponents that it happened. If anything, he's the guy in the action movie walking away while the, putting his shades on while the, the car explodes behind him and the car's cloud nine in this equation. The thing is, he's walking to another. He's walking into another car that he right, wants he to gets crash. in another car. Yeah, true. <laughs> well, we can say it's clown car. Okay. The, the, the thing is, uh, the thing is, like I was going to ask you, Maui, about this city side. You said that is not enough justification, not justification, but like you cannot blame the IGL for for not playing well on the city side. Like I want to ask you, how do you think the city side should be played in any team? Because like for me, IGL is equally, you know, important. 
to read the game and to set up the game and how to call it the freeze time where we should like play the early rounds and then how we do the mid rounds it's also like a lot of the on the IGL I agree there is some reactions and some pressure on the individual players themselves more than on the T side but I don't think I want to exclude the IGL responsibilities on the CT side you know I, I agree that CT side IGLing is important and that the the leader and the captain should be calling some sort of idea. You know, at the at every freeze time before you start a CT side, you're going to say like, okay, let's run our app setup. Okay, let's run this like smoke down mid type of play. Like, let's do this, whatever. There are obviously little plays, but you're going to say that there's less onus on the IGL to come up with ideas when it's like sometimes it's just like did norbert kill two guys in pit when he was perfectly set up to do that and the answer is yes or no as opposed to t side it was like converging onto a bomb site with like the right timings and everything like that but it's just that it's so dra i'll say this I'll, I'll just make this even more clear it's even more drastic like okay for all of the teams in the top 20 vps vp basically like ct versus t side they had the second best T side in relation, essentially, like the the difference is that great. Like the, the basically the teams with the worst T side per their CT side, which to me kind of indicates like okay something is really going wrong on that T side or something is going very well on that T side. VP was in the top three where it's like Falcons, VP, and Vitality were the teams with the best T sides in relation to their CT side rating. The three worst teams are Spirit, Liquid, and Gamer Legion. And the thing is with Spirit, they just had such an absurdly good CT side that it's like they just couldn't maintain the T side. They still have a great T side. It's just that it was just an outlier with how good their CT side was. But yeah, that's the thing. Like VP, their T side by basically like every top team in the top 20, like they have one of the top seven T sides. Like it's just it's just not a problem at all. Their CT side is is um I think it's the third worst of all top 20 teams right now. If you're just looking at just like what the, what's happened in 2024. Okay. Right, I've got a hot take. So right. are you ready? Okay. Obviously, there's a story. Cadian benched in Team Liquidity. So here's my hot take. Cadian will never again in-game lead a team that will be ranked top five in the world in the rest of his career. It's over. Forget about it. He's done. Here's why. And actually, what's funny about this one is it's actually a pretty good hot take. I think most people will be like, what the fuck? Why are you writing them off? But I think when you actually look at it, I think it's one of the most reasonable ones, like as in it has good reasons behind it that aren't too crazy, even though I do think it's a mega spicy take. First of all, as far as I can tell, you notice in none of his teams ever has it ever been implied he might give up the orb. As far as I can tell, this is one of the reasons, by the way. Here's the actual, I'll give people a bit of like sort of law of Thorin here. This is how I came up with the original take of Cadian thinks he's the main character. Because I always thought to myself, the easiest pivot when Heroic wasn't winning was, Pro just IGL and get a really good AWP and then wouldn't you just have like an even better team? But I actually think because of the nature of Cadian's career where he was a jobber journeyman for years and years and years and years and years, and, years, and by the way, only got into the top because they he took on the IGL mantle. I, do, I think essentially, the logic it's like the, put it this way here's the logic to, for him to give up being an orper is like saying to Huxley stop being an IGL and be the coach of the team it's like yeah but he wants to be the player and win he's not there to just make the win and then I'll be just like less of a part but I'm, I'm part of it I think Cadian wants to win and him be the main character and so I think unfortunately it looks like he won't give up the orp or the IGL so if you're going to be orp and IGL well I think after Liquid there's very few teams want that that's that's such a bad combo. I mean, the joke is we've had a discussion in this first take about Jim might even give that up and that was the only other guy doing that that was successful. Device hasn't yet even won anything. So right now, that's not a great role. In fact, Cadian was the one sort of main example of like it can work in theory and I think people are out on that. And then there's two other angles. There's one other angle. The one other angle is, and this hasn't come out publicly, but I think players talk and I think after the stabby thing and after Team Liquid... By the way, Team Liquid especially, fucking NA players can't shut the fuck up. They probably already steam messaged everyone. The other players are all going to know now how Cadian is, and they're going to know that he wants to do all of his own calls and micromanage the fuck out of everyone, and they're going to know that he has a bit of a spicy attitude, and he argues, and he can be a bit egotistical. And I'm sorry, when you... That combined with the fact that you also have to let him out open IGL, I don't know how he's ever going to get into a team that can be top five again. Like, you're going to have to have a team with some star players, some good players. Like, he just, as far as I can tell, he'd have to do a heroic. He'd have to build a whole new squad himself, get all the and build up and it'd probably take a year or two years. So I, I'm going to say it. I think my hot take is I don't think he ever gets there again. I'm sorry. I think it's just it's kind of done with the part of his career, I'm afraid. Just a quick question. Go. Does the hot take stands if he gives up the op? 
No, because I actually do think uh, he should. I think if he did that in IGL, I think he's plausible. I don't know if, what his game would be like. Rifle. Oh, because like the I, thing is, like if we stick to the, op I don't think he's going to give the op. Though I think he's going to. I, yeah, I, I think, I think, I think he's going to do uh, it. Let, let's say if, if he's not giving up the op, right? Uh, then I absolutely agree with the hot take. I, I don't think there is an. Uh, I, I even opened the rankings right now while you were talking, and I have it in front of me right now, and I don't see a team yep. that speaks English or Danish, right? That he can jump into as the op, not even yep. an IGL, as yep. the op, that yeah, he can bring it? them up to a legit top five again, yep. right? Like, I'm not talking about like you play one good event and yes. some because yeah, of yeah. the rankings you get in the top sure. five or whatever, like a legit top five, like for example, Mouse and Vitality yeah. are now, right? Whatever. So, the, the thing is, like, there is no teams right now that can do that. The only possibility, and that needs to like all the like stars to line up and get another possible change is he goes to Fnatic. So now if you look at Fnatic, he goes and he replaces Afro, right? Op for an op, and then they need to re and take the IGL, but Buddy leaves, or he gets benched, and they get a player that's like equally good as that Matisse kid. Which, that Matisse kid is, by the way, tier one potential. I think he's very good. So this is why I'm saying this. So in that scenario, this is his only, only option, right? Only option. The, the other option is, I have to say this, I, but I don't, I don't even believe it myself, it ends, right? They can get some pieces, maybe they give him the opportunity or whatever, like in case they get rid of Glaive and yeah. whatnot, because their the upper Poddy, yeah. Poddy is like, you know, yeah. not the highest rated upper. Outside of that, I don't see it. The third option is that like some of the, like you said yourself, a Danish team with like next town and Yabi and all these things, but yeah. that will require a year and a half or two, yeah. right? And that I don't see he has it like, for the next two years to kind of do that and op at a high level at all. Like anything above average is going to be, you know, really, really uh, impressive. So I do agree if we stick to the op angle, like if you stick to that, like that, that is like a no neg not negotiable thing, then there is no chance he gets to top five, possibly even top 10. I would even go to that that far right not like a stable yeah. top 10 not just like yeah, yeah. Being 10 like for two weeks uh, yeah. just a stable top 10 there is no chance but you know it's just simply because there is no no projects that he can join and there is no players that would take this you said like players are talking but you know truth tends to kind of you know sneak its way to the yeah but, but here's yeah, here's also what fucks him because like i say line. he did it's, it'd be one thing if his only problem was within the danish scene like the you know stabby and the heroic plays toxic because i can tell you an example of where this is a great case is you'll love this Kassad. even though in the french scene everyone got sick of existence and sort of shit talked him internationally all those players would they would have brought him into like a phase class i know internationally a lot of the players they didn't get those stories never got to them so they weren't willing to his problem is because he was just in liquid now everyone's gonna know me like essentially everyone who speaks english or danish is going to know these stories so look by the way it's not even like he can't change the person but i do think when that baggage follows you i mean you saw with the lexi p people were saying to this day he was micromanaging so i think when those stories follow you it's hard to escape it's hard to escape and hard to have people want to play with you what do you think maui yeah what's your take i I'm, i mean i got two things I, i'm surprised that I, i'm no one's saying this one and i know that, i mean a lot of these kind of like where can Cadian end up rumors are very far-fetched already and I feel like one that's actually kind of caught my eye is that actually this is I feel like Big Clan would actually be able to use him really well because right okay. now Sirson is Sirson is just flat out one of the worst stoppers in a top 30 team like he's he's been performing terribly I think I think this year he's got like a 0.9 something rating like right. it's just it's just abysmal for him and the thing is that taps in with like not working with gobby anymore maybe he wants to free himself up maybe maybe because i don't know i don't know what the, what went really behind the scenes there with that tabs in gobby like the divorce between them i i wouldn't necessarily let's let's just get back to this though like this is a weird that's a weird landing spot for him overall i don't see it coming anytime soon however i think your take is great i don't think that kadian is ever going to be finding himself on a top five ranked team i don't even i don't even care if it's like hltv rank or the nice. way we tier the teams or anything like that he's so far away from becoming that and this goes all the way back to what i said at the paris major he's not entering the pantheon of great in-game leaders i know people were up in arms about that like how do you know how do you know because that was his best chance that was his best chance that he's ever going to have yep. in his career. It felt like we had it once again, but then the whole system broke around him. People aren't buying into the vision that he has for the game because 
for all I can tell about KD and Annette, the way he wants to run a team, he needs people to trust him to fall on, on their swords, essentially, at a given moment, at any given moment, drop of a hat, they need to be able to turn around, trust him blindly, and follow him. And the problem is that what you, you need this perfect balance, this assembly of players who, one, trust you so much that they're going to they're going to forego anything they think. They basically need to strip away their own autonomy. And you could tell Twist doesn't want to do that. Naf doesn't want to do that. Yakindar doesn't want to do that. They don't want to say, okay, yeah, sure, sure, Kadian. Let's gamble stack at a minute and 10 seconds in the middle of a round. Like, what do we, no, like, I'm going to try to hold my bomb site because I believe that I can multifrag. And the thing is that that young group of guys from Heroic, the, you know, Winstown, Yabby, Shush, Tessus, like, they all, none of them really had an idea of how they wanted to play sure. other than what, you know, the sprinklings of like Hunden's teachings back on like Mad Lions or Asilian when he played with them too. Like, and the thing is that Kadian has so much more authority. He commands it when he enters the room with these kinds of people who are more meek personalities. And now with this dragging idea of Kadian behind him, where now people know that it's like, yeah, he kind of needs it his way or the highway and that he can't really compromise on these. He can't bend. He can't bend. And now people know this. And so I don't think that his reputation is anywhere near where it needs to be to find himself landing on even a top 15 team let alone a uh, top five one and building up once again from the ground up with just a group of, of players who can buy into his vision i feel like that was that one opportunity with heroic with stat yeah. with down with the rest of those guys i think it, i think it's over for katie in a, in a big way maybe in like three years like maybe in like three plus years but as it stands i just don't he's not he's not getting there he's not getting there so let's me. uh just i try to explain to people how they should see this the way because the, the how I see this thing that you're trying to ex explain is basically that Kadian was one of these like boxers right that, that that went all through contender stage and like fought through the rankings and all these things and he got a shot at a title at the bell to become immortal right by winning a major and stuff and he missed it right twice he had two, actually two fights right one in Rio and one in true Bas that's true yeah right? he had two he had two yeah title fights and he lost both of them he didn't get the belt right that's why he's not going to be in the hall of fame and he's only going to be one of the immortal guys who won the major yeah. and whatever right so the way that's the way i see it. that doesn't make him a terrible igl or oh, anything no. like a bad player it's just the way when you rank these people up as the ultimate top five igls for for what Dan duncan is trying to kind of get with his point he doesn't really add, add up there and he doesn't have any space to be there even if he goes to to big i don't think Thompson would ever like leave that IGL position at all uh, because he has this grasp over the players and over the organization and like he, it's kind of his team and he's German, it's German organization and then that would be meaning like relieving control and I believe he he tried it once with that young guy, Process or whatever his name is. Or uh, Sin. 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 He gave Sin. it to Sin. Sin. Yeah. Sorry. Sin. IGL. Yeah. Sin and then all of a sudden he t took it back because like, you know, whatever happened right so i don't think that that is a even though it's an interesting option for him yeah i don't think it's a valid one at all i don't think it has any kind of legs to stand on uh when it comes to big as well because they are not gonna get a better offer in kadian over searson they're gonna get pretty much the same thing when it comes to numbers right and they're just gonna lose on the uh language and on the communication so the trade-off is not really worth it Plus, I don't think Liquid will give him for free, so they would probably have to pay something, so it doesn't really add up to me at all. It has no, no meaning. But it's my turn, right? Let's stick to Liquid, because it's the, it's the thing. My hot take is that no matter what the changes happen in Liquid, they will not become better un until 2025, at the very least. Okay, so this year is just a write-off. It's just a write-off, instantly. So the, the thing is, like, the way I, I, I thought about this, like, today as well, before the show, is, like, there must be some sort of a systematic problem, or systemic, whatever is the right thing to, 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 to call it, a problem inside Liquid, because I feel like there is no one who is in the position of authority, there is no one, there is no one in charge over that division at all right now that is, you know, with a clear vision of what teams needs to be. 
and what they need to do in order to be the Team Liquid they need to be, right? The Team Liquid is a respectable organization, championship, like culture and everything like they're winners by by you know by default they build that over the years but ever since the lineup which won the grand slam in 2019 i don't see anything that's memorable when it comes to that liquid lineup not too memorable at least right so and that lineup itself also didn't have uh, any kind of authority figure over them at all like you remember there was adrian as a coach and they had stewie leash knack twists and uh who else was there uh, Nitro as, as a captain, right? Nitro was kind of a captain there, but even him he himself said that he's not like, you know, that figure, right? Yes. Uh, we had the, 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 the Stewie as a big personality, Elise as a, as a big personality there, Naf and Twist were kind of defensive, and, you know, it was like uh, a mix of, of personalities that were meshing together very well, on top of the fact that Adred as a coach was good in the sense that, strategical sense, of the game and it suits what they needed at the point and they played really good basic counter strike you know really really good basic counter strike and that was the thing that kind of got them all these titles and and the grand slam in 2019 but after that they seem to be lost in space when it comes to cs division when it comes to spend it, it feels like you know that for example like i'll give you the the, the the example you know when you find yourself in a stranger's house in the middle of the night and somebody yeah. turns off your lights and you just keep stumbling around, hitting everything. He obviously possibly, means when he's crashing in everything. The only thing I don't understand <laughs> yeah, I is why your when, friends. Why, yeah, why say a stranger? You mean at your friend's house, surely? Why would you be in a stranger's that, house? That, that's not a stranger. I know my friend's houses. I can find my way out. The thing is, <laughs> the stranger. House, no, no, here's right? the problem. I can't think you're a burglar. No, no okay, is, right. If it's hypothetical, I'm with you. But you were making like a thing like relate. You know, you know what it is, guys. You find yourself in a stranger's house at night. You're stumbling <laughs> yeah, like, around. Where are you, you wandering? Know, you, you're hoping they don't wake up and set off the alarm. Like, it's imaginary, okay. Duncan. It's okay. imaginary. Right, okay. Listen, listen. I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> it's just imagine things. Like you're I don't know how you do things in Serbia, but you know, we like arrange, knock on the door. We just, you know, we just walk in. We just, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I, I can rephrase it if you want. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah. You find you meet a girl, you go to her house. That's there you go. There you China, go. Right? And then Obviously, a lot of our viewers still can't relate, but don't worry about that. Keep going. Yeah. She's keep going. She knows you're there. There you the go. It's like, yeah. it's fine. No, the thing is, like, the electricity, electricity goes out, right? Yes. It's all dark. It's everything, right? And then you keep stumbling on the fucking, all the furniture, all the things. Maybe there is a chance that you find your way instantly, but there is a very long shot. Sure. So you end up knocking everything, fucking yeah. losing, dropping everything. Yeah. That's how Liquid feels like in the last couple of years. They keep like invest in wasting this money on these players, bringing these players like Rain Baker, now Skulls and like all these players sure. right there, there. Even 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 Katie at this point, right? And also like the 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 the, the fact that that you can see that they're missing on a vision is the fact that one of their not one of them, their best paid player, Yeki Indare, one of the most expensive players right now in the scene, currently right today, yeah. is, is brought there to frag and all of a sudden he is turned into IGL. They 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 bring they, they remove Nitro, they bring him back, they remove him again, then it's like they, they sell their best player individually, which is a liege. It shows that there is like no direction in that team whatsoever. So if I'm liquid, if I'm Steve, Steve by the way is is, is a really He's a really cool person, right? I talked to, talked to him before. We haven't really spoken in the last few months at all. He but means Joker think, Steve, the manager. Joker Steve, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I was like, I think he's in charge of some of the operations when yes. it comes I to. I believe he now has to, to say in this yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, The thing is, if I'm him right now, I don't make any purchases. Don't waste any more money. Get what you can get, right? Build what you can get to Shanghai. Play the Shanghai Major, get your money back with the stickers and everything because America has seven spots right now oh, on this sure. current circuit, like because they secured it in the last major. So make sure that your plan is to be on the fucking Shanghai so you can get some money back. Meanwhile, prepare your 2025. There is not going to be French, not franchise, but partnership spots. There's not going to be ESL rankings or HLTV ranks, it's going to be Valve rankings. Make a plan there, get. In, to know the market and who is valuable and how much you can get like you talk to the ceo to the board of directors they'll ask them leave what is my uh, what is my budget for 2025 2026 2027 cs isn't going anywhere right i'm not going anywhere we are just going to be building this together right so you tell me what is the budget and i start preparing the plan for 2025 because everything will switch in 2025 there is no reason for liquid now to spend any kind of crazy money because 
allegedly 600k for skulls was just whatever and the the the, uh, the salaries they are paying are probably ridiculous at this point so there is no need to waste any more money and risk potential like god knows what happens down the road but the thing is like just get over with a year any way you can you don't have to rush any of these decisions right now and prepare your assets for 2025 to see how we're gonna play and how we're gonna be the best liquid we can be because everybody even though the fans of cloud nine the fans of phase g2 everybody i feel like wanna see liquid be a contender right i want to see liquid be fucking you know one of the best teams because it's a great organization right so it's just the way they, they approach the next six months is going to be very crucial for them. They lost the coach. They fired Zeus for whatever the reason is. They probably know it themselves. But they, they obviously they uh, they uh, benched Kadian. They're probably going to sell Skulls. So they're missing three pieces right now. The market itself right now that it is has no opportunities for team like Liquid to grab, right? There is no... There's no one cheap enough. and obvious, is yeah. there? Yeah. yeah, there is no good enough people for Liquid right now yes. that are available to go to Liquid. You know, so that's why they need to understand the market, right. what it is right now. Do not, like, you know, jump the gun. Do not overpay anymore. You pay that lesson. Now settle down. Finish the year. You're probably 99% going to be at the major because of the seven spots. And then look towards 2025. So, yeah, if they do that, they are not going to be any better this year, you know. But it's gonna be the right way to do it. Uh, I mean, okay. There, I think that they actually can get better pretty quickly. I actually think they can get better. I think they can. It's it. The problem. The problem. I, I'm gonna go to like the management side first of this, though. I feel like the thing is with Joka Steve. To the way I've always seen Liquid is that Joka Steve works very closely with the coach. He has to pick the coach. But when he's when Liquid's been at their best or they've looked more competent, that is, I do feel like it's when he's his right-hand man is somebody that just seems a little bit more tenured, per se. Like, when Zeus was on the ball back, like, five years ago, I, I'm not talking about the recent Zeus. The first Zeus, time he was what there. He did, what, yeah. Yeah, the first time when he was with Zeus, he was very good. With Adren, I thought, I thought obviously, you know, when they won the Grand Slam, obviously they were good then sure. as well. Even with Daps, they felt like a more competent and more comprehensively strong team. And uh, the thing but is sorry, that... Sorry to, to cut you off, but I just, like, I want to understand, like, if you're meaning, like, if you're comparing all those lineups with today's lineup, right? Or yesterday's or whatever, last month's lineup. I'm, because if you compare them, there is like, it's very hard to be worse than that. That's what I'm saying. Because I don't want you to overpresent it as like, they were like some sort of a great team when they had that well, or something, because they were not. I even think the moves that they did at the time looked better. Because right. the thing okay. is that it, even though, even though people would say like, oh, this Rain Waker move, ha, huh, that was a joke, right? It's like, he had the same rating as skulls, like, but he was way cheaper. Oh, was like, way let's cheap, just yes. let's make that clear. He well, was way by the way, as far as I know, him so and Patsy were both cheap players. They weren't like massive signings. Yes, exactly. So the moves, even though they didn't pan out necessarily, they were much cheaper to do it. And so, and that's when he was working with Daps. And I, I feel okay from what I have, what I have gathered around the scene. I, I know that when he, when. Joka Steve, as the GM of Liquid, is working with these coaches. He's working in tandem with them. He's not just like Joka Steve isn't like holding it over the whole team necessarily. And maybe, maybe Kasad, you could argue that you'd want to change the whole like the restructure like Joka Steve's role with the team. But it always felt like to me he wasn't the guy that was necessarily just saying with an iron fist, "We're picking up skulls, we're picking up Rain Waker, we're picking up Yakendar for this amount of money." It was just like people around him were just contributing their ideas and he's a collaborative guy he's not necessarily he's not the guy that's just like i've got the whole spreadsheet and i feel like someone that he should be working in tandem with is that they got a da data analyst right now they got it they've had a data analyst for a while this guy demars de rover which weirdly enough is like that's your gamer tag but it sounds like demar de rosen as well it's demar de rosen it's a play on demar de rosen yeah i don't know why the way it's a weird gamer tag but either continue, way continue please he's Okay, yeah, okay. Either way, this guy this guy has an MIT background. He worked with like NRG and Valorant, and I would I would imagine okay. that he would be able to bring something to the table too with Joe C because to me, like Joe C just kind of has his pulse on the scene, but he's not necessarily like crunching every number, crunching every okay. position to the same degree as somebody like you, Kasab. He doesn't have you... to do that, Maui. I'm sorry, I get to cut you cut yeah. you off. The thing is like he doesn't have to do that. He needs to say no to the six hundred K bows for skulls. He needs to say, okay, I understand your point of view. Whoever suggested that, let's say person named I, whatever, right? I X, think I think well, Mr. Let's, X. Let's, I, I, okay, let's say yeah. Mr. X, right? Because we don't know. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Yeah. X suggests, 
I okay. need to buy skulls. Yeah. He's very good. What's the price? 600K. You want to go down? We can offer you 200 plus 50, whatever. No, 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 600K. And then as, as, I'm, as I'm Steve, I'm saying like, listen, Mr. X, uh, I understand your point of view, but right now I, as a GM, am not I'm not feeling the value of 600k sure. for a player like that. He he might be a good thing, but for me, I don't see it. And if that like bounces back on me, I take the full responsibility for that one. What is the option B? Like you know, what is the option C? So it cannot be like, oh yeah, he told me, and I said like yes, 600k, whatever. I, that is the, the 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 one of the responsibilities of a general manager. In yeah, it team. is. He doesn't have to be like if if a general manager comes to me, I don't have one by the way. But if he comes to me and tells me like, oh, listen, we need to play more default on this map, and I think utility is bad, I would just fucking slam him instantly. <laughs> not physically, but you know what I mean, right? But that that is that's not your job. But if you if a GM comes to me and says, listen. Uh, right now, the value for this player that you want to get, like we cannot pay this one. We, even though we have money, we we don't see like as an organization right now that he's valued that much. And like I feel it, like from my own expertise or whatever the fuck else, I, I have to say yes. I have to agree to that, right? Because it's his responsibility. You know, we need. That, that's why we need to understand who does what in the organization. I feel like Liquid is missing that, especially like on the coaching side, right? Like they had this all these coaches right now, and none of them, including Jason, who said it himself. That he couldn't really do all that much once he got into liquid and that was what what like three years ago from now right it's just like it's a sy systematic thing in liquid it doesn't really matter what the player is i just just take an example of yekinda a player that you play uh, pay several thousands several tens of thousands of dollars a month was brought in as one of the most uh, one of the strongest entries, one of the most raw skilled, talented players at that time from VP, and all of a sudden, few months down the road, you're making him an IGL, and you agree to that? If my coach comes to me, if I'm JJM, and my coach comes to me with that idea, I say no. As a GM, I say no. Listen, we bought this player, we were paying this player, player for this much money, and he is there to put up these numbers. This is what we need. This is what we. This is our, our our vision for that player as an organization. As a coach, you can make this work or you cannot make this work. You tell me. If you cannot make this work, then we're gonna get another coach. If you cannot, if you can make this work, then go and, and do it. Respectfully, I will have to say no to your decision, and that needs to be the relationship with two, these two people. Not just everybody doing whatever the fuck they're doing and just say yes, no, ah, six hundred k, million, two million, fucking fifty k salary, forty k salary. It just doesn't fucking work that way. And this is the product of liquid. Like all of these years, ever since they lost that that lineup that did something, this is the this is the product of that. So they that's why I said take the six months off, sacrifice one more season. It doesn't fucking matter if you get five more seasons down the road. If they win tournaments, who's gonna remember this one? Nobody. Maybe Duncan, but nobody else. You know, that, that's the way they should do it. Keep making your point, Maui. Sorry, I just took it away well? from you. Yeah. I think I'm good on that one. I think oh, okay. I'm good on that one. Okay, yeah. right, first of all, I'll start with a joke, which is yeah. with how many problems there are in liquid, and also notice in this discussion, we have no fucking clue who's walking through that door to put the liquid jersey on. In fact, I think, quite frankly, if I had to speculate, I actually think, not even intentionally, they're going to end up in Kassad's position anyway. I think they're going to end up with some stopgap player for the next season, and then maybe after the next majors, when you actually get your checkbook out and you sign a big player. By the way, I don't even think that's necessarily a terrible idea. If you're going to make fucking twist side GL, don't put all your eggs in that basket. You're not to win the major with the magil so if i were if, if i were you i'd just find out if he's a decent igl then figure it out you know like so i actually sort of agree with that but my joke would be if they really do have that mit analyst at this point in time he would actually be wasting his actual like skill set and time by actually trying to find tactics and come up with strats he'd be better off trying to actually hack into like the fucking tactical database of like either honden back in the day with that google drive or like whoever you think the best tactician now is in world cs so i don't know he needs to just be like i'm in the mainframe I've, I've got root, admin access, opening, strats. What the fuck? Not out here. Put that into the recycle bin. Um, 
<laughs> got the I new mean, new way. The the data analyst like MIT. What the fuck? Is I know. Like, oh, listen, listen. This player when he has it. a fucking smoke yeah, and twenty it. seconds left, his heart rate is jumping by fucking fifteen, and that's why he's been. Like, Kassad, you have to realize this is Americans smoke. for you, mate. It's a bit like why every time I say it, can someone explain to me why everyone keeps going on about Valens? They never go. He's great at CS. They always go. He worked as an aerospace engineer. It's like you guys are all like recruiting people for teams as though you're making a fucking posse for one last bank heist like bro you gotta understand he's got all the tactical operations and he can handle security like what are you what about fucking CS the C- I just need to know he's a nerd he's in the demos and he's come up with a great new T-side fucking smoke take on Anubis that's what I want to hear so anyway that's a joke but if we do like serious takes here's why I actually think Kassad's right this team's gonna do nothing is because first of all let's just start with the IGL thing Right, it's not that it's impossible, it's just, like, at this point, people who went from star player to IGL and were good at it in any capacity in the early days, you can count them on one hand, you probably don't even need the whole hand, you know what I mean? Like, and, that, and also, I even think, like, crucially, most times it even will work is when, like, it's more like you were already falling off as a star player and then you pivoted. This guy, you could argue right now, Twist is actually playing peak level CS again. He's at his best. His numbers are fantastic. He looks really good. He has all sorts of impact in the game. The idea you're going to give that up and then be an IGL, because here's the problem. I do think you're going to give that up. I know the dream all these guys have is, like, somehow they're fragging or stay, like, you know, even 90% of the level, and then they'll still be at... It, never ha- it almost never happens. It almost never happens. In fact, I would even argue the actual uh, discussion, which maybe this will be a hot take is actually right now when I watch device put up all these numbers and then the team not make finals that was cool the first couple of tournaments because like hey the potential now you just don't make finals like now I'd actually ask what I used to ask of Nico when he used to IGL phase it's like bro maybe the reason why you can still frag is you're just not actually the best IGL maybe you just played your game fine but maybe you're not doing a good enough job as an IGL maybe that part doesn't fit so I think twists quite frankly if he's really committed I think he's just going to tank his game a bit I don't think he'll be bad but I think he'll just become an average player and, and by the way the second you take twists as a star off this team bear in mind like I said I don't know who the fifth's going to be just fucking... you've got no firepower yeah what you've got then because then Right, the obvious yeah. next name we go to is Yikindar. By the way, I'm going to say this right now. Forget the twist angle. Literally, if Yikindar doesn't frag at a good level, this project is dead. Because the only excuse left is it was somehow Cadian. Cadian was somehow blocking me. Now I'll just say this: I don't really buy that because you played like shit when you IGL'd yourself, mate. And then also, when I watched him under Cadian, look, you can certainly make all sorts of arguments with his sort of like playmaker style of like if someone doesn't give you the right call or someone's too selfish or someone's just obsessed with what they're doing. Yeah, it might not create ideal circumstances. But if I go back and if Ian Maui went on his stream right now and pulled up these demos, we're just gonna see you missing shots too, bro. You know what I mean? We're just we're just gonna see you actually play bad at times in the game. So I'm just gonna say this right now. That's the number one tick box. If your kind dad doesn't become a really good player again, the whole project's done. Like, it's over. In fact, by the way, the real problem you have then isn't even the twist side gel. It's like, do we kick your kind of? Like, Like, as Kassad said, if people want to talk about, like, buyouts and do teams have money, I'll tell you what, we can free up that enormous salary tomorrow. I can get you a player that plays better than him right now for half that salary, mate. There's plenty of them. Even more. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's already a big one. Notice, by the way, they're my two big guys. I must have frag to have any chance at this. And then the last one I'll go to is, this is where also signing Cadian inadvertently extra fucked you. Because he was the IGL and the AWPA, you not only don't have an AWPA, but again, guys, even speculate in your minds, what AWPA is walking through that door to be the AWPA in Fifth of Liquid? It's no one good. It's not, like, the joke is, I'll put it this way, I'll tell you this right now. I've even heard they maybe have gone down to the level of the wrinkles of the world and they haven't gotten them. That's disturbing. Like, if you can't get that point, at this point, you're going to be getting an unknown or someone who isn't even good or, or God forbid, just some random any op who's left. Who's left to bring to the team, right? There's almost nobody. nobody. That's my point. There so, is nobody. You had it all together. I can't see how they can be any good. I actually, it's, I actually think, by the way, Kassad, I couldn't even argue. This, this, oh, you know what? Here's my hot take. I've got, I'll, I'll one-up your hot take. Because if you actually look, the one part about Liquid that was underrated is they'll make it all playoff runs. I'll go one further. I think this Liquid will be worse than the last one. I think it'll have worse placings. This one will get, like, grouped, mate. By the way, this one might not even make the major two. Are we ignoring that? Everyone's acting it's like Cadian's gone and we fixed major. the problem. The problem here is you've kicked Cadian, but you haven't fixed the problem, have you? I, I don't know. I actually think they might be worse, mate. I'm kind of out on Liquid, yeah. The thing is, like, it's very hard to, like, you know, get 
it would be very hard to not get to the major for America for this true. one. That's true. And that's that's like yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a very miracle if you just manage to fuck that up. True. But the thing is that you said it yourself. There is no ops they can get right now unless they pay the full buyout. They could have gotten Dexter, right? I'm yeah, sure yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There was an option there, but decided to stick with the uh, Kadian thing and then just remove them like two months later. Now you you mentioned Twist. I didn't really go into that angle, but him being IGL. Like, why, like, for example, he's the number one star of the team, right? Now it's Twist and Neff, right? For me, at least. So, why the fuck would you take on that role and ruin your own game? Because if you want, like, if you drop your game by 10%, which is like for like 100% sure that it's gonna drop, unless you're fucking Nico or whatever, which is like a not really that he is a good player, no, but no. he's not Nico. Sure. Like, your liquid is gonna be worse. Than it was before. Now, especially if you don't get like an upper that's gonna be like you know Shiro's fucking caliber, right? But who can they get? Nobody, right? Unless they pull out some fucking talent, which is like very difficult to do nowadays. So by the way, I don't, Kassad, see, like... don't you even think another problem they're gonna have, mate? Is it's not even purely about money. I also feel like who the fuck wants to join this project? Do you know what I mean? Like someone, anyone who's in a current top ten team's not joining because who the fuck why would you join this project? And also, uh, Duncan, that's a Duncan, that's a good you know? angle as well because like imagine being liquid, and you approach players from the position of weakness as liquid. I in bleed had to pro approach players Gosh. and like from position of because my yeah. budget is limited Gosh. my uh, you know the, the the cs division is new and we are going from position of of, of, of weakness we don't have the partner yes. spots we don't have the events we don't have anything right so you start from zero but like for, if for liquid organization with that resume with that like you know uh, culture to go and hunt for the players from like low ground from position of weakness is just mental to me so again save it up look for 2025 see what the budget is do what you can do in the next six months and be the liquid you can be in 2025 2026 whatever the fuck you can do okay. because right now you are making one bad move after another okay. and it needs to end somewhere somebody needs to draw the line and just fucking say this is enough and say like we are just going in all right all right me. i've got a hot I, well i well I've wait, i think there's there's oh, two on. this You've is just this is yeah, yeah, yeah. This is kind of distant and it's kind of like, who could they possibly get? Okay. There's been, in terms of like, in terms of oppers, I feel like there's two and they're both, they're both absurd. They're both, these are both absurd, but it's not a hot take. This is Come just on. literally available. Okay. Op, they're simple. They're simple is available. That's, that's right. Right now, just riding True. the bench for Navi. Doesn't have a team. He wants to play again. He's been opping when he's playing FPL. He, he definitely, he wants okay. to op a bit. He wants to all, 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 match. all I'll say is this. Match. All I'll say is this. If you remind, if you remind me in a few months, I'll give you a fire behind the scenes thing about that. But you'll have to be in a few months. Okay. okay keep going. Keep going. Okay. 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 And then the other, the other thing is that um, uh, Imperial want to replace uh, Henny with with Tribe. So Henny, Henny's available also. And okay. I would, I, Henny, Henny, like these. Are, <laughs> You know, I've just realized it's insane. I can't believe Maui. No one's this ever made this. This is no, no. you have to go down the line. Talking go, about future and like, you know, the big things and the vision. And he says, Kenny. Dude, they picked up OC. Like, they picked up, like, what That's do we... one of the mistakes. That's not what you want to avoid, like, Maui. Like, yeah, like, like at least don't Henny's... want that anymore. I bet Henny's proven more in his career than OC has. I will just say, and... Maui, how is it possible? This is the lowest hanging fruit and none of us <laughs> saw it. How is it possible the guy's actual name is Henny? And he loves to party, and none of us put together that with Hennessy. No, How did no one do that? It's barely ever been done, though. Why is that not a broadcast? Yeah, yeah, That's right. a bagger, isn't it? Should, it should be done all the that time. is a bagger. It yeah, it is. No, Henny, Henny fi farmed the America's RMR last last America's it's RMR. Thing, it's a desperation move. I see what he means, Kasabi. You have to. At this point, there's almost no one available. If you want to make, make the major, liquid, if you want to make the major, you get Henny. If you want to make the major, you get Henny. Is Henny a liquid type player? Is he? No, he's absolutely yeah, not, but he so formed then, the then, America's then RMR. He was like the best that. opera at the America's RMR last yeah, time. Yeah, because they got that's to the a major. great RMR and super strong. It's not, right? but we're yeah. just trying to get him to the major. Just get him to... Dude, if you put Henny on Liquid with, with those three guys, I don't even care who the fifth is. They're making the fucking major. Okay. Oh, they're like, they're, that guy said they have the game enough skill. They're making it's the like major. Calling they're going to keep like... walking. You had the it's biggest dick in the Unsolid army, right? You know, the, <laughs> game was the Unsolid, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's that's, like, that's, that's, yeah. Like that's yeah. a good line. That's a good line. Yeah. Okay. That's a good like, line. Makes yeah. no sense, but you know, they have to go <laughs> for some, like line. you know, they have to wait for the market to open up to yep. get some players, right? Yep. Unless they want to, you know, cash out for Monesty, which is never going to happen. 
Well, like, and the other problem is, will he join Liquid again, lads? That's okay. come back to that again. Don't I, sad. I have another take. If we want to, if we want to, instead of talking about well, market then. talks with Liquid, I got another take. I got another take. Okay, okay. Right, I've, I've obviously been one of the biggest, the biggest hate. I, I don't even want to say the word hater, but it's pretty much like, you know, the, you the, mean. Redu yeah, the, the reductive way of describing yeah. how I have been towards Skulls. But I actually, I do believe that Fury is... Furious second half of the year is just going to be leaps and bounds better than the first Wait half. Wait a minute, you do know this show is called Hot Take. How's it a hot okay, take okay. that Furia, who at the moment is the piece of shit that's car that doesn't flush <laughs> and you have to get the brush and fucking get in there? How is it a hot take that they will be better than that? You haven't even, by the way, at least okay. you have to you have to at least give us like a, a metric. Like, are they going to make like a playoff run somewhere? Are they yeah. going to do you know give us something to? Yeah. It can't just be they're better than absolute shit. Remember, they'll come like last place in tournaments and shit. Come on, come on, give us a, give us a taste of how better, much better they're going to be. Come on, put your okay, money where your mouth they're going to let's say this okay what are they world ranking right now they're like number 19. Now, they're number 19. i think that furia will make a let's say a top eight let's say a top okay eight that's bold bear in mind eight, they're only at, they're only adding schools that's, that's somewhat bold but they're, first of all they're adding schools and they're changing the code Maui, changing, Maui. Yeah. first of all you need to take into account that hltv ranking and esl ranking are becoming irrelevant very soon Okay. So are okay. we counting those or are we counting Valve rankings? What are we counting? In no, no, no. I'm saying they're going to make top eight at a LAN. Oh, top I'm eight. A LAN. Like a tier one LAN. Okay. So like a, a real like ESL or yeah. whatever the fuck. Yala like. Compass, not a Yala Compass. Right, a proper like tournament. Yeah. yeah, that's what yeah, I'm, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. asking. Yeah. As well. okay. I'd, say, I'd say like an ESL Pro League, I think they could do it. I think they could do okay. it if they have enough time. I think that they could... Eight's weird when it's at Cologne because then it's like... It's like you don't make the playoffs. Team playoff, yeah, sure. But... But I actually oh, don't have that question. much. <laughs> <This> <laughs> yeah, question. Do they make? Do they, do they go through the planes in, in Cologne this year? Do they go to the? the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they make it through the plans. They make it through the plans okay. with do skulls. They? With yeah, okay. with skulls, I think they make it through the plan. Yes, okay. yes, I do. Okay. I do. Think ah, that, that is a metric for you, at least you know something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just continue. Sorry. I mean, I mean, okay. To, to describe it just a little bit more, it's like I mean, I've been the. I feel like I was the one person in the entire scene nine months ago that was like, guys, what the fuck do we think Skulls is? Like, like I was like the only person that was seriously like, this guy isn't all that. Like, I looked at his demos, I went through the stats. Like, he wasn't that special of a player, but I do think that he's the perfect piece for Fury. That's my big point here. I do think he's the perfect piece for Fury. I do just think you need a passive anchor, fairly reliable on CT side. Is just generally not gonna fuck it up completely on the t side that's the whole point like like skulls skulls was like so and so it's just a heel turn for me on skulls because i i definitely i definitely had the most to say negatively about him and everybody was fighting me for the first like three months about him on liquid they're saying like no he's gonna be good he's gonna be good and he never was good but i think that he's gonna be much better on fury he's because he's gonna speak portuguese again and it's a great role roll for roll over uh over kai it's just, I don't think you ever said, like, in, in the last months I have been listening to you talking shit about Skulls, like, nonstop, right? And all of a sudden, you think he's the game changer for Furia? Like, those two things, I, I'm sure Duncan caught that. I think speaking Portuguese, so I speaking say, Portuguese is going to help him a lot. So he's going to become, a, a, like, a tier one player on LAN events because he speaks Portuguese instead of English? That oh, well, here's the other. Things. Here's like, the, the here's the kicker. Things. Here's the ki here's the biggest kicker about Come this. On. It's that Cello won't have to play these stupid roles for him anymore. Cello will go back to his old positions, which he was way better at. Like this has been one of my biggest points about Furia ever since they signed Cello is that he's in the wrong spots. Like so, basically, he's just being there. He's he going, was the best. <laughs> he broke no, Furia. Just no, he's him so, filling so, that spot. Cello had to play these like anchor spots, which he never played in his career before. He had to play like some lurker passive spots on T side, which never were his spots before. And now he can go back to being an active rifle, like space taker and a connector player again. So Cello's going to see a huge improvement. Skulls is a huge improvement over the fact that they were playing with Kai. And on top of that, they're going to have a different coach because Gary was doing uh, God fuck all. Like he was doing absolutely fuck all on that team, letting Art just buy MP9s every single round. Like that, didn't, that made no sense. So if they have any sense semblance of better leadership and cello is going to have a better position and and skulls is going to be a bit much better than kai was like it's all of these factors come there's like three factors here that are combining to make furia have a huge leap in terms of their performance huge leap is a bit of an overstatement i think you're just reaching too far they were at the With bottom the huge... of the barrel they were like the worst they're... tier one yeah team. but that's exactly why i'm saying the huge leap is too much you're saying they're going to be top eight from the bottom of the barrel they're going to jump 
to top eight with just a single change and that's skulls not even they can, get, they can go yeah, they, they'll make top eight out of land they'll make hey, top eight out of land at the end of at, yeah they're not well, the, the, the thing is, like, maybe a honeymoon, maybe they get into the players and that's it. But uh, any other events, they're playing, like, Pro League and I don't know what else they have. I guess Blast, if they're partners. I, I don't remember if they are. Or affiliates or whatever the fuck is it. Uh, I don't think they're making there because I don't think they're going to be good enough simply because they changed Skulls for whoever they kicked. They're right? not in Blast, so, apparently. So yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah. so what is it? Like, it's only, what, ESL Challenger League and Pro League and that's all. Plus Yalas and whatever, like we said, we don't count that. So I don't, I don't think you are, on, uh, you are seeing the full picture, right? So the thing is, like what you're saying about skulls as well, it kind of proves one of the two things. Like either you are completely insane, which is all, kind of... which is the uh, eternal question <laughs> that we existentially yeah. ask. <laughs> or, In some ways, this could be renamed yeah. to Hot Take Sanity Check because that's it's more like what it is, isn't it? You know. But you being right also makes me right because that will mean that liquid. Classic quote. So I can't really lose it. I know. I don't so that like means that stuff. liquid has systematic problems and skulls was good all along. Okay. It was just okay. liquid who's the problem. So okay. I can't really lose on this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, it's basically, it's basically like that famous one with Richard and JKS and Hooksy where because he had both takes. It's like when JKS leaves, if they lose, Hooksy was shit after all. And then if, you know, whatever, JKS is one, then it's like Hooksy wasn't any good and he didn't need him. So yeah, he win, <laughs> win either way. Right, my take on this one is, again, as usual, this is what's weird about this show. Normally, people think I'm an extremist with my takes and I have very hot takes, but I end up being like the fucking, I am the peacemaker. I just find the middle path, don't I, between the two extremes of Maui and his potential insanity and Kassad and his inability to understand what a hot take is and just overly <laughs> practical Balkan nature. So as I walk that fine tightrope between the two, I will say this. I think, this, put it this way, I do think Fury will be better. Like, for example, oh. I think Skulls almost certainly will be better than he was in Liquid. Like, I think, by the way, this player I listen I never thought he was going to set the world alight I even said that was the obvious gamble player in that lineup but the difference is I don't think he got anything out of him like I thought he was going to like like grow into the role get more comfortable he looked like uh, quite frankly he had the weight of the world on his shoulders from day one that never went away I think he was under enormous pressure by the way I can tell you right now it was already bad enough with the odd move we had in the past I will say it right now I think that Skulls going to this team has also killed dead any hope we had of Brazilians going to national national rosters remember we already know okay, so I didn't want to do it there's only basically fall on a cold have tried but like I don't think any young Brazilian player is going to do it they're just going to stay in their region they obviously want to stay with their people so I think Scots will be a little bit better I, I sort of know what Maui means like if they just put him on the shit rolls in theory you should get more of chill therefore you'd be a little bit better my problem is just this I actually think even though he didn't even put that crit like just make a top eight or playoffs of one tournament isn't that big I agree with Kassad first of all it's not going to be that many shots and then secondly I don't think they'll even do that because here's the problem why my main issue with this team still is think about the three roles they haven't really got nailed down so opera is still fallen right that's already you haven't got a very good opera there igl does anyone even know is it fallen if it's fallen you haven't got a very good igl and they don't even have a coach right now like bro i think this is a really this team's a fucking mess like i think this team's a really bad like essentially they just do live off case around doing the odd crazy performances about it so i think quite frankly I think they'll still just language in North. Well, the joke there is I wouldn't wish that on fucking Zeus, would I? You know, he doesn't have to go. To, listen, he did a bad job because that. He doesn't have to go to prison. You know, that seems unreasonable. I mean, you... he needs to earn a living. Okay, that's but, true. Okay. The, the thing is, like, he might take a shot as that project, right? Like, yes, he's going to be back go working with Fallen, maybe, right? Which is not the worst thing you can do. Uh, he's going to have a potentially better lineup, maybe more freedom, maybe a chance okay. to, like, be with the people from his own culture and country. Yeah. So, Maybe it'll make him better even as well. So it's just, uh, it would be a good match, but you never know, right? Maybe if it's... Problem is, I just think they really suck. Till now, maybe really it's not sucks. Even... It just yeah. sucks. If people don't yeah. even know, I'll even give you something spicy a lot of people might not be aware of. Do you know how we've all been wondering for the last few years? It, listen, this is partly a joke. It's, if you even look at the timeline, it isn't just this thing I'm about to say, but it does line up right now. If anyone follows, obviously, remember, it used to be a two-man team, didn't it? It was Keserato and Yuri. You all remember that? They were the two star rifles. And you're all wondering, where's Yuri been the last couple of years? Now, as I said, the joke is, right, actually, he has just dropped off the last two years in general. But if you follow his social media, you will no longer ask that question. Because, spoiler, do you remember that girl who's an actual model and has been in, like, something like Brazilian Playboy, who did, like, the IEM Rio Major for the Brazil? She's his girlfriend. That's not a joke. That is real. He is on, like, the fucking WAGS level, Kazad, where he's got, like, some famous girlfriend now. Like, so all I'm going to say is... 
listen, God bless, enjoy, you know, like do it. I don't know, fucking have a great life in that. <laughs> but I think I now see why, sadly, you have somewhat tanked your game, mate. So there's that. So I think this team is just nothing. It's just nothing. I right, the thing though, I've got a, I've got a hot take. And what's great is I might get my first are you insane from actually he's probably said it to me before as well now. He just the difference is you're the whipping boy. So he goes he goes straight to that with you before sometimes before he even thinks about the take, I know I've even heard him say are you insane, then think about himself and sort of almost agree with you at the end of the take, but okay. Then he says so, why Katie I is know, funny boy. I know, exactly. So here's my hot take, and I actually think this is a fucking flamethrower. Are you ready? The hot take is this sentence. By the time the Shanghai major arrives, Simple will be in Na'Vi. Because here's why. That's a hot take. That's a fucking hot take. One, they've already said they're not changing the roster. Two, they're all saying in interviews, like, oh, every reason under the sun except that they need a roster move. Like, it was like, oh, it's all fans hating on me. And then, like, you know, fucking JL, like, ah, oh, that's my motivation. And, you know, Valve didn't put that, like, 17-pixel fucking thing inside the thing or whatever. So basically, I think essentially, if you look at all the excuses, I think they're actually in denial, this team. So what I actually think will happen, for real, it's just the results in the server will just force them into a position where by the time the Major's coming up and there's one or two events left, because by the way, if you go look up, obviously, the, if people don't know, the Major is right towards the end of the year, say like November or whatever, right? Yeah. If you look how many events there are in the calendar, there's still going to be quite a lot of tournaments, like, especially, by the way, for Na'Vi, obviously, a partner team in all the region, like, they're going to be playing quite a lot of tournaments. And I think what will happen is this. I think there's no way they make a change. I believe them initially. They'll stick with this lineup, but here's what will happen they'll just never get the results they think they want i think they'll have like you know they'll be like you know fucking fifth to sixth in cologne or seventh to eighth then they'll go to like a pro league and they'll make you know like a semi run but they'll be eight and then at, at the end i don't think they'll make any more finals or win any more trophies and what i think will happen is this i do believe played when it's like you know this gradual approach but i think once you get so that you're like in say like september or something and you still haven't done anything and by then by the way think of what the, it's going to look like this year then you'll have had all these tournaments where you made like one little blast final and you were kind of irrelevant and no one even not even any star players people are bragging about i I think what's going to happen is you're going to be in a position where it's like, are we really going to go to the major with this team that's almost proven it can't win a tournament? And I think that's the best time ever if you still have Simple on the books and he wants to come back to say, hey, you've got like two lands to prep. Like, just join now. We'll put you in. We'll start building up. And we've still got a couple of lands to build and then he'll be there. It's a hot take. What do you think? I I don't know. The thing is like, who, first question for you, who does he replace? Well, the beauty of Simple is he could replace like a bunch of them. Think about it. He could replace Immer as an aggressive rifle. He could replace Wonderful as an AWP if you if you think Wonderful's not good enough, it's up to you. He could even replace Jail as a lurker. I think he could do it all, mate. He could do a lot of the roles roles. Depends what you want in the team, right? Depends who he is as a player. The real question right now is like Simple played one game of Counter Strike 2 official yep. game ever since it came out. Do you want to put him on the spot like that? Like do you get what you want? from the player that has been known to be unstable when things are not going his way? Do you want to put your team, who just won the major three months ago, without giving them another shot for a, at a, at a, to repeat the, the success? Do you do that? And what if you do it, what do you get in return? You get Simple, which has not been proven at all in CS2. Yes, he's the GOAT of CSGO, but he did play only one game on that fucking Falcons lineup which is like 50% his fault and 50% of Falcons. But the, th the thing is like, do you want to put him right there or you just put him straight up now and give him a couple of events? A big gamble. I mean, if, the thing is like, would you do it, Duncan? I would personally. You are, you are my, in a blind position Here's, here's right my now. problem. My problem is it's a bit like how I always frame G2. My issue is I think with people like Blade, Alexi B., Maybe I'd even say GL in his role currently. I, I, wonderful's not bad. I think these players are capable of winning a major if you have the right mix. But right now... They already did it, right? Yeah, but right now what I think sucks is I think this lineup can't win the major as they play. Like the way I, It's why I always keep commenting. The reason why I find it so weird that people take that fluke thing so personally is because, bro, like this team's in the past that have fluked majors but had like an explosive style or could get lucky. This team doesn't even... It's not even like that. It's such a fucking by-the-book team that they, the way they win and lose is actually usually very obvious. Like you can 
couldn't see the fucking... That's why everyone gives credit to Mick's Lexi being played. So I think it's really hard for this team to fluke results, actually, even though they did it one time. I actually think they haven't done a very good job randomly tripping over and beating a vitality type team. Like, they don't really look at they do that to me. So even though I get Kazad, absolutely, this move, by the way, it's why hot take. It could absolutely fail if you did it. You could look like an absolute dickhead. The difference is, though, if anyone could somehow come back and in a few months get really good, this is the guy. Like, if I'm going to gamble, fuck it, why not gamble on the absolute peak? Because I tell you what, if you gamble on the peak here, the peak is that you actually somehow could win the major. That's not even implausible. And by the way, I'll just say this right now. I don't know what the point... I personally just delete that fucking game from Blast Showdown. Like, I can't no, take one... No, no, it doesn't, no, it wasn't a sample size. Just, yeah, exactly. There's only one official game. Yeah, of course, I'm with you. I'm playing. with you. Yeah. The thing is, like, the, 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 the angle that I would agree with you on is the fact that, like, if I'm going to gamble on someone, I might as well gamble on... on yeah, on gamble right? big. Because yeah. uh, it's just... Uh, you know, value against... And he's already in my team, it doesn't cost anything, etc. Yeah. Risk against reward, like, yep. that, that's also, like, that's uh, another angle that we need to discuss. Oh, also, by the way, I'll tell you one thing people don't mention. Contract. Here's the angle no one mentions as well, Kazad, because they keep saying what you're doing, like, yeah, but what about when he played in CS2? Here's what everyone's forgetting. Yeah, with a totally different team. If he joins this team, he's played with most of them. Bro, he was literally he was literally in this team like last year, the ESL Pro League. Like, and also people like B, he's played with for years now. He's been with and played for years. Like, I actually think also people are acting like he's just starting CS2 again. Yeah, but he'd also be with people he's known. It's not like a totally fresh team. He's not joining Mouse tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The thing is, like, uh, with him, like, I, I would just if I'm gonna make the gamble. Let's say I agree with you, and I want to do this thing. I do it insta. You just do it I now. I know what you mean. Yeah. Now, and I I'm have with to you. take some yeah. L's. I'm just like trying to think what... I just don't think Blade would. So I'm trying to think it, when, right? when would Blade take the gamble is what I'm thinking, you know. The, the best way, the biggest value that you can get out of that gamble is that if you do it tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. Then I'm you have you. a couple of events. Yep. Then you have like more than a couple of events. Yeah, you have half a season. To get yeah. your ass into the fucking major and maybe yep. win it again. But any, any, any timeline down the road will increase the risk of blowing it all up. No, no, I'm with you. So, uh, yeah, that, that, let's say I 50% agree with you. If it's been done today, then yes. If it's not, then no chance. Come on, then, Maui. Where are you coming on this deck? I mean, I wanted Simple back on this team before they won the major. <laughs> I wanted him in for Ema. I, I don't... I feel like for, for Simple to rejoin Navi, they need to just be able to realize that they're not ever going to have sustained success with this lineup. That's the big problem. Like you're not building, you're not building the next Astralis with this team. And because the team is so tactically focused when they win, it's like the pro like Navi has so many problems. We've talked about it on its shows before. Just like, there's really no true star player. Like JL is funnily enough, their best, star their like most star player, but yeah. it's not even wonderful. Like wonderful was supposed to be like supposed to have all these other pop-offs, but he doesn't know when to take over games um alexi alexi's a good caller blade's a great coach and that seems to be the backbone of their team right now but there's no one else you can really depend on other than weirdly enough jail in bigger playoff moments and so they need a guy that's just gonna raise for me like it, it, i simple would be the floor raiser for this team because because right as it stands right now like ema can lose to everybody like ema can be bad versus everybody wonderful doesn't know how to take over games so he can't even always have the impact necessary so i could see myself replacing um either of those guys honestly i could i could replace either of those because i would the one guy i would not put in simple's roles or like simple in his roles would be bit uh i, I just feel like sure. i don't want him to be an anchor player like that's just not simple skill set i want him i want simple to move around the map and the only the people that move around the map the most are our ema, ema moves around it a lot on ct side at least and wonderful does it a lot obviously because he's an opera so one of those would be fine for me i i think wonderful weirdly enough has kind of been up and down like he's not he's a little he's weirdly kind of streaky and he just needs to be in the right situation sometimes like definitely Definitely not blossoming into the player that I feel like we wanted to see by now. So I could see either of them changing, honestly. Uh, I would prefer Ema just per role, like he's just not doing well. But like, I even see the case for Wonderful. But the thing is, I also think with Navi's Ukrainian ties, they want to keep they want to keep Ukrainian players on the team. They've got they've yes. got Wonderful. They've got Big. You can even argue that they would, would be why if they Ukrainian. replaced like Ima, then they'd have three Ukrainians. They can even start calling themselves a Ukrainian team again if they want. They can have the flag and everything. That's even Ex a selling point to some degree. 
Yeah, yeah. It, and like, so I'm more like theory crafting the whole the whole move for Navi and what it means versus the timeline. Like the timeline for me is, yeah, do it today. Do it, do it right now. Give yourself the whole player break. I just booted up Simple's Face It. Like he played a couple games yesterday. I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's playing right now with any sort of intent whatsoever, okay. but I, I do feel like there is a, there's a, there's like, if, if I'm Navi and I'm more cutthroat, I'm doing it. Like that's that's me, but I also like I pull the trigger on thing these things probably a little bit faster than than Navi do. They they you know like Blade, he wants to feel everything out, make sure that like have we gotten every last drop out of out of this stone? Like can we can we pull everything we need to from this, or are are we just banging our head against the wall? And to me, it feels like they're just hoping for another fluke, or oh, AKA they're hoping for the best game planning of all time between Alexi B and Blade. One last take, maybe? Do you have one? Yes, I have, uh, yeah, I have one. Uh, it's about Falcons. The, the thing is, like, uh, with Falcons, my hot take is because the HLTV rankings and all these rankings are going to be lasting until the end of the year. I'm going to say this. Falcons are not going to finish 2024 on top 20 in HLTV or ESL rankings. Okay. Despite their, uh, despite their uh, you know, investment, which was not the... Even though people are rumoring like maybe they'll get big players still. But what is the big players? Like maybe I should rephrase it with this lineup, but even with like the second secondary lineup, I don't think they'll do it. Because like there is no big names they will get right now. I don't see anyone because I don't see anyone, right? Like who can be there that's a big name that's gonna improve their game to that extent. Right now I, I, I don't see any players that would that would go there at this point, unless they, it's a tremendous offer with like financial, you know, benefits, right? So I'm looking at at their, let me see, team profile, they have events, they have Blast, they have Cologne playing and Pro League. Like, you know, playing is very soon and Blast is sooner than that. So that's basically going to be, I assume they're going to be playing that with the same lineup and then Pro League is maybe with a change. After that, we have the RMR if they make it and they probably will because of the the money and stuff but what i'm saying like even they might finish on 25 23 22 whatever but despite the 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 investments they made right that's over that's close to 1.5 million let's say in the worst case scenario they paid 1 million plus for uh san Pius and they paid that blast spot what was like 300 400k for the whole year and let's say everybody else was you know, everybody else was free. Magis, Zonic, Snappy, nearly free, I guess. Madden uh, was uh, was free. I know that for a fact. And it's like they invested all this money plus the salaries they're playing. Let's say it's not, let's say the worst case, it's not 40K, which I think it's more than 40, but let's, let's say it's 30K, right? Average. That's 180 together with the coach per month plus, you know, times 12 months. That's That kind of adds up to like 2.7, 2.8, 3 million dollars, right? And they with that, they didn't only get the players, they got the spots, right? They got the core from Ents, they got the RMR, they got the Cologne, Katowice, Dallas, Bad Boom, uh, whatever the, 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 the thing is like uh, the events, you know, across the, the season with the ESL Challenger and stuff like that. And they haven't been delivering anything right now. So I don't see how they're going to, climb up at all uh, and i don't think they're gonna finish in top 20 in this this year at all because ever since katowice which was their like peak of the season right when they reached semis it has been constant downfall decline in four did they play they played the semis or the finals of the dion chopping thing and they lost to complexity i believe now in the like just before yeah, the yeah. break yep. and that's their best result and that's esl challenger right like for a team that's multi-million dollar with players like that, for me, I, I don't I don't see that as a success or even a remote, like a trace of success, right? For me, that's a downfall again and then like again, you know, a steady decline in results and it's gonna culminate in you know at the end of the year as a, as below top twenty in HLTV, right? Unless they do some sort of a miracle run that will put them above twenty or fifteen, right? But I don't think it will happen especially with the lineup that it is right now. So, yeah, that's my take. That they're not going to hit what spot now? They're not going to be top, top 20, 20 at the 20, end of the 20, year 20. on top national 20. TV. Top 20? 20, yes. They're 15th currently. Yes. Okay, that's just that's just crazy. That's just crazy. That's just... You've got top 20? Dude, 20. You, anybody... 
Dude, anybody that has a pulse that's in the Blast and ESL Partner League should be top 20. I'm not going to say that Snappy and and Dupree and, and Sun Pius are having the career resurgence you'd want, but, like, top 20, dude, I've made, I mean, like, that's just like a guarantee. If you're not making top 20 at that point, you should you should just you should just retire. You should just retire. If you're in the blast partner league, if you're in like an EG literally Wait, well, you EG have to pretty much come last place to not be top 20. Would, like what you just have to have, never have a single run ever. Surely you also run like you have to combine like your bad results with something having good results. But the point still stands. That's like how I firmly believe the lineup needs to change, right? The the, the okay. project needs to take another direction. Okay. Because right now it has been steady yeah, decline of that. results. Yeah. And that is gonna end up because from the start of the year where they had their peak result, top four at a tier one event, one of the biggest events of the year, nothing happened and they're still top fifteen. That go that plays into your argument but it also plays into mine that they haven't done anything since and they're steadily declining with this rate where they're going to end up top 30 or something right they had partnership spots after katowice they still were losing spots they are still yeah, dead last they will win a random bo3 versus a top 10 team just by accident and that that's it that they're gonna, I'm, they're gonna I'm, bank, I'm banking on that they they, they won't that's the thing that's how okay. firmly i believe Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Hey, hey, Falcon is a comp is a totally flawed team right now. They are there's no there's just no star player right now for me. Dupree and Sun Pius are their best two players and neither of them are going to hit the top 25 each of HLTV, you know, when they go above that. Like they they have uh just the worst CT side of all tier 1 teams at this point like but but i think that if you're if you're an organization like falcons there's there's rumblings right now there's rumblings that they want nico they want monacy i don't think that they're going to get them but i think that they're looking for something they're looking for replacements obviously they're looking for the sun pious replacement they're looking for the modern replacement and if they are able to score one of those if they're able to reach over to say hey liquid you guys are failing like right now naf twist we can buy you out of your contracts then why can't they get them why couldn't they improve for falcons right now Failure at that level is not an option. Like, this is already looking bad enough. They look so stupid for everything they've done this year. They're not going to let this get way worse. They're not going to keep keep treading water. And I don't even think they're treading water. They're drowning. I don't think they're going to keep drowning. They're going to they're they can put themselves on life support by just just swinging all of that that cash that they have and then they can just buy somebody new. They I don't think that they're I think that they tried. This was the trial. That was obviously the error of the last season. It's not I I don't see that they're going to just stay stay in this position. If anything, I would say that I don't think they're going to breaching top 10 for me for Falcons with this roster is impossible, but I do imagine that staying around the 12th to 18th range is well within their wheelhouse. The problem I have is like I asked you, because that's why I said, even if they make roster moves, because the problem I have with this team is, is why I've actually been trying to say this point for a while, which is I actually think if you want to make fun of this roster of Falcons, yeah, go for it. They haven't been good. If you want to make fun of the fact they didn't get an eco and they got cocked last second, yeah, laugh at the fact that they ended up with everything except the star players. They kind of looked silly. You can laugh at a million different angles. You can laugh at Magus for not being a Vitality and maybe Zonic should have taken the pay cart and stayed. You can do all that. But the problem I have is I'm sort of with Maui on that last point. To me, it is almost inevitable this this team one day will be really good whether it's this lineup or not because i actually think the the reason why i i don't think it's just hot air i think i think this actual org has a commitment to spending money and that is the thing when they did that report which admittedly was through like some dodgy russian website so who the fuck knows if they ever really are talking about honestly and nico but i will say not all of those are bullshit. Like, probably still 60, 70 percent of those Russian ones seem to have a grain of truth to them. I take that not as, like, literally, we're just going to get these two players if they say yes or no. I take that almost as, like, a sure force of, like, look, this... By the way, that might even be why it leaked. It's like, look, we're willing to get these level of players. So, as you say, Matt, we, even though, obviously, the twist one, fans are already going to go, he's anyone play in Saudi or whatever. But, obviously, you mean as a player, like, if you just look at his player career. I agree with you. Uh, the point is, if you're Falcons, here's why... If Kassad, if he keeps it with that lineup, he's probably right. Like, it's at least it's debatable. It's possible it could be the 21st lineup at the end of the year. I agree with Maui also sort of. Like, they could just fuck around and win the odd, like, fluke upper set here. Or some team, play, like, another top 10, 20 team plus plays badly against them, you know. Like, a new liquid lineup shits them out or something, you know. Whatever. That could probably get you still, like, 18th place. But in, in terms of, like, the idea of, like, if you can change the lineup, though, to me, the, the idea they're trying to send to the world is... We're, as long as there's someone out there who's a big star player, 
if you're even like at all open to it, this is what I think happens. It's that they come to you. It, by the way, Tristan Liquid's a good one because obviously he's a mega player right now. And in theory, Tristan Liquid's not going to win tomorrow. If he was available, right, here's why I think eventually you're going to end up with a player that join this team. Because they don't have to just go, do you want to join Falcons or not? They can do what actually they're doing in the talent world. By the way, I can tell you the Esports World Cup. If they really want you, they just keep coming back and raising the number. And it, as everyone knows from football, you say no initially when you're just thinking, well, I don't want to play in Saudi Arabia and tack my career. But then what happens eventually is the number just keeps getting crazy and you go, fuck, I mean, I couldn't even get that from like Real Madrid. Eventually you just say yes, right? A lot of people will say yes. So in my opinion, it's almost inevitable eventually they're going to have some star players. I also think, by the way, an actual positive sign of that like rumour was that the rumour was like that Nico joins his IGL and they kicked Snappy. That implies to me what you're saying, Maui, that actually they have very high expectations. They're not just going to commit to Snappy and Zonic forever. And if anything, by the way, here's an angle people probably haven't thought about. Because going in, we all thought it'd be a great combo, Snappy and Zonic. I don't think people have thought about this fact. Dude, Zonic's not a punk. If he thinks Snappy can't do this project and is failing, he'll cut ties with him. He's not just going to go down with the ship with that guy and end his whole career. Like, Zonic's a winner, mate. So I also do think it, it depends how much Kassad's willing to give us to move here. If they can bring in one or two players, I think they can easily get top 20. If, they don't, if they're going to keep the same lineup, it's going to be touch and go. So again, sort of walk the middle path there. <laughs> do you want to do one last take? I've got one last take for you. All right, let's go. Right, go my go. take is this. This lineup, I'm assuming they keep this lineup of heroic. By the end of this year, this lineup of heroic will make the final of a big event. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, wait, wait. Can't... Go, go Ooh. again. This lineup of heroic will make the final of a big event by the end of the year. Now, are you ready for the reasoning? So, first of all, right, go for it. I, I love. I, just, first of all, first of all, I'm sorry. I'm I haven't even made the fucking the point final. yet. We're okay. I'm wrong before I've even made the point. We're okay. Go for it. Yeah. I go. Go. I, sorry. I go. Right. I, so, right. first of you're all, right. Right. first of all, I do think this lineup is actually fire on paper. I think all the pieces look really good. They could mesh so well together. Kicks in his an up and coming IGL. Seems like he actually has some skills. I actually do think Dex is the shit. Give him more time. He'll be he'll be a top he'll be top twenty player. Maybe not this year. Obviously, I don't know if they've got enough tournaments. I think the re-signing of Tessis, genius, great signing, fabulous one. I think Shush is always underrated. Yeah, I actually think this is just a quality lineup. And here's the thing people are missing. You're all doing that thing where you remember, well, the first land they took them to, they were like, all right, they made that like bet boom top four. That wasn't too bad, right? It was Dex's first land back. Then they had Dallas. No, they didn't. Dexter wasn't at Dallas. That was Nikidos. So, by the way, even without Dexter, they were still like fucking a team in the playoffs. Like, they were not even bad there. Then they had the one tournament you're all thinking of. Yeah, but what about Yala? First of all, I don't give a fuck about Yala Compass. Secondly, even those results, I can break them down instantly for you. So, they lost to three teams. They lost to Astralis. By the way, losing to Astralis in BO1 is no shame whatsoever. They're a very good team. Then they lost to NIP on Ancient. Right? By the way, that's because Ancient is one of the best maps for NIP and it's a BO1. Then, lastly, they lost to what was the other team? they lost to uh, Mongols 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 who by the way isn't even bad and that was a close game so I think Dexter is going to get better he's only had two lands with them I actually think the core is very good and they actually saw now can actually cook and I actually think it's because the names don't look crazy on paper. When you look at the names, you don't go, oh, my God. So I actually think this team, all it's going to take is one good run. They can do it. Also, by the way, I could have just made this mildly warm take and said they'll make, like, playoffs. But I'm not now we have So I was doing, as Kassad taught me last year with the fucking Navi take, I'm doing a hot one. I'm going for final. So they have to probably beat a couple of good teams to get this. I don't give a fuck. By the end of the year, my boy Dexter in the finals, starring, vindicated, glorious, mm. Acadian in a dumpster, watching fucking... And cry in his eyes out. Yeah, stop it, first of it. all, first of all, uh, heroic is a top 10 stable team right now, so them getting into a playoffs is not even a mild take, it's a ice cold take. Like, that's uh, something that's like expected. <laughs> but second of all, you first you said you counted them, you counted their result as uh, in bad boom as a good one because they played the first event with Dexter, but then you said, fuck Yala and fuck that event, they're the same event. Like, you cannot discredit one and give credit to another. Like, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I literally gave you context for the Yala one, why it's not even that crazy bad. No, but you said, like, I don't give a fuck about that one. No, That's no, no. Said, right? I said I don't. I, I mean, as in, like, Yala's not like a massive... It's not like fucking the major in the field and now you have to write the line. About. By the way, I'll go yeah, the other way. You give right, credit go for then. Red what? Boom Dacha. That's the thing. You get them. I mean, you cannot do it both ways. You can give them credit, but you can you can take take it away from Yala because those two. They all count. The there they go. Oh, they all count. Keep going, dickhead. They all count. 
Now they all come, but they got you. Yeah. First no, they all come. All right, I'll take the. Come. I'll take you. Yeah, well, no, this is why I interrupted you in the first place okay. to ask you. All right, none of them come then. The okay. Events. Right. Them. What well, even but in that case, Kazad, logically for you, it's an even hot take because for you, they haven't even played the tournament yet. Exactly. Okay, that's a super hot take. Yeah. Right. I was, I was gonna. Right. I was gonna okay. say. Okay. Fair enough. Like, okay. Right. I see what you're doing. I am Cologne. Pro League. Whatever. Blast. Yeah. A real tournament. A real tournament. Yes. Okay. So playoffs there. And no, no, play. they're going to make the final. Players. They're going to make a final. No, no chance. Yes. Absolutely yeah. not. They're going to make the playoffs because they have the lineup for it. They have good players in Dexter, Nerds, and Kixon. And plus the two Danish guys, they're good enough to be like a small version of previous Heroic. You have to understand, Kassad, it's all about Dexter, mate. You, you fools out there. Y'all don't see. Y'all don't see. You you just can't see so the I game. Love like Dexter. Listen, I love Dexter. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to go full Donner, but y'all just can't see the game the way that me, I people like nearly Dexter got do. Dexter. That's how I match. I love him. So anyway, <laughs> here's the point. He's just gonna fucking go ham, and he's just gonna dominate. So it's all gonna be good. It's all don't worry okay, about it. Okay, so yeah, he's gonna dominate. Cold take is dependent on Dexter. Yeah, of course. Yeah, can shut it down right here. He's gonna do it. He's gonna get it going. But this way, much like this heroic lineup, Kassad, much like Dexter, slaps. It's on the Zuma take that was. I, yeah. I, I yeah, can't disagree. All, They're a good. decent lineup. Now. Okay. A decent okay. lineup. Pretty good lineup, actually. They Where am I wrong then? What, how, how far am I going? You, you only have them going to like a playoffs. That's it. They're not going, they're never going to In a the final. big event like Cologne, like Cologne, Katowice, I would say playoffs. In the less bigger events, like let's say IEM, Sydney, Rio, which are still good events, they can get the top four, maybe even the final. But that's like, that's the, the, the farthest, okay. I can, farthest I can go this year. Things can change. In Listen, I trust Saw to put the jigsaw pieces together and have them playing the game. Mm. That's a shit reference oh, to the movie. Wow, it, was a, it was a bar. It was a bar in a way. It wasn't bad. It wasn't yeah, bad. I, got, I got it. I got it. Yeah, it was a bar. It wasn't bad. I've seen you do better. <laughs> okay. I've, I've, yeah, Come on, Bowie. What do you like think? With this team... Well, finals too far. Finals is too far. It is all take show. I'm intending. Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. I know. Okay, I know guys, but the thing good. is, I, I guess. Good. Okay, you know what? Kasada's has beat me down so many times at this point that I know if I just say, if I said finals for Furia, he would have. Oh, he would have gone mental. He would have walked, walked away. He yeah. would have hung up True. the call. We would have to just stop the episode. We wouldn't fulfill any of the obligations True. we have here. But no, the thing like, they're good. They're like all right. I feel like in a weird way. Like Hicksan got really because he was an up and comer, and people wanted to be the hipster pick of like of like oh he's super sick. He's sure. like like he got weirdly overrated. Like oh, he's a good true. IGL. Yeah, he's in like he's kind of in my like C plus tier. Like he's like he's just he's doing Ooh, pretty okay. much what you want from okay. from the, the like with the pieces that he has. He's practically accomplishing what you would expect they would accomplish. No more, not really much less. I do like the point that Dexter's gonna just get better. That's I think that's basically the grounds of this whole argument is that like. I don't think sh shush shush is a very much known quantity and i like what i see nerds nerds can actually improve because it just seemed like he had some hiccups he dropped off a bit recently and, didn't he he definitely did exactly yeah. so so he can have some improvements yep. and dexter can have some improvements that those are my two guys right now where i just feel like they need to find a little bit more comfort in what's going on with the team dexter especially given that he's just jumping back into tier one counter strike and the thing is that if dexter does reach the heights that he was able to before with og with spirit as an individual player Ooh. Really, the sky, the sky is the limit with this team. Like, I've got, I've got to ask you a question. I, I, I this is either going to be a bonus additional hot take that I'll expand, or maybe you just agree. But I want to know, right? In light of what we discussed earlier, I'll tell you a hot take. Uh, maybe people think I'm. I, I think fans will think it's a hot take. But I don't know if you'll agree or not. We'll see. I think this roster is better than Navi's roster. Pound hey, for pound, insane. yes, you already say. I'm not. I think it's better than Navi's roster, mate. So. After, after, listen, let's take mm. this. Let, let's, and by the way, if so, if somehow they place. fuck around to make the final of the major, I will actually just be. Let's pin this argument. Let's pin this argument right okay. here and say, like, okay. Nabi, how much time did they take? Did they take him to, to win this? It took him a while. It took him a while. Well, how how long? Something like three, like, four months. This this lineup, right? Took the yeah, biggest three, four months, months. I think in their in their in their fucking careers, three months. When did this team form with Dexter? Was like a month ago, two months ago. Uh, yeah, he joined for yeah. the... Uh, let's take was, yeah. take away the player break, which is okay. like a month, and give them three more months, four months. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How much you want? Yeah, that's enough. How much you want? That's enough for me, man. Four months. Yeah, yeah. What is, uh, you need to uh, make sure that, like, we need to make sure we understand the rules here. So they need to end up in a final of a big event to be measured with Navi, who won the major in four months. Yeah. That's kind of insane, no? 
Yeah, it's going to look fucking you straight saying, fire when I'm right. It's so. going to look like shit <laughs> in the rain. The big <laughs> you, know the other, you know the other thing people haven't thought through as well? And this actually is where every fan who hates me has misplayed their hand. Is if you've said the entire 10 plus years that you've been following the game that I was around, that I'm shit and I know nothing, then it never is a big news to be like, Thorin got it wrong. Everyone's going to go like, all right, who cares? Like, that doesn't work even anymore, guys. So I can actually just take a limited chances now. But I'm go- I think this is happening, though. This is, the- this is a hot take plus a real take. It's a mix of the two. All right. Okay. With, All right. Well, like, okay, just doing the, like, HLTV, like, player-player comparison go thing on. here. I mean, Alexi's better than Kicks I'll give you Alexi's that. better than Kicks Um, wonder- Wonderful versus Dexter. Honest to God, if I could have one guy on my team and he's, like, a, a stable foundational element. I would pick Dexter over Wonderful today. Okay, like, I just you can't like pick that. Dexter yeah. now. The thing is, no, you no. cannot pick Dexter in now the because the previous, sure. the CSGO in the future, come down yeah. in six months and tell well, me. Like, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, picking him to build a roster today. Yeah. I'm picking Dexter yeah. over Wonderful today. Okay. The, the okay. one, and then like te- right, Tess is, I'll, t- I'll take Tessis over Ema easily. I'll take him that. And then Shush, Shush versus Bit. It's like, do I want a more stable force in, in Shush or do I want the guy that's going to have the random pop off in Bit? And then with Nerf versus Jail. J- JL, I think JL's better than Nerds. JL's better than Nerds. Whoa, but, what? But, what? Yeah, yeah, Holy JL. shit. Kassad, he just backed into the craziest hot take of all. But, JL's but, better than Nerds. For real. You nerds. are mentally for reals. Ill. For reals, though. No, what JL's better fuck? than Nerds. For fuck? sure he's better than Nerds. What are we... For this year? For this year, it's no question. Are serious? Listen, his stats might be better, Maui, but I don't think if you watch the answers like, oh, they are as players. I think Nerds is a way better player, personally. I think he's more skilled. More complete player by yeah. any means You're necessary. thinking... See, Yo, Kassad, you're telling me I was thinking about CSGO when it came to K Serato versus Ykadia. Dude, JL has been cooking in CSGO. He's had CS2. some good stats, I'll give you that. He's been yeah. so good. He's, good He's stats, the Blast yeah. Spring Finals. He was the best player by far. At the Major, he was their best player by yeah, far. Yeah, he's Let's be honest here. Nerds, 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 Jesus Nerds is, is watching. Listen, Jesus is watching right now. And you <laughs> well, need to pick JL and Nerds. Okay. Fair enough, okay. JL yeah, and Nerds this- right now. Who are you picking? To win for a the three years, JL. for the next three years of your fucking three team, years. Jesus three is years. watching. Who are you picking? Oh my God, three years. Uh, I'm taking jail. Two years. I'll take. I'll take. I'll take nerds because he has a better oh, attitude. Oh, boo, boo, boo. Boo. Three years. <laughs> for three oh, years away. Dude, jail Jesus said he lost motivation. Jail oh, Jesus said he lost is motivation. Spoken. Yeah, why is if he lost motivation? Why, crazy. why are you taking him if he's lost? Crazy. He's lost motivation. Right? Year, when JL for one year, I take. JL. When you actually think he's good, he already says okay, he's lost motivation. So, Duncan, so, let me talk. Are you building your team for one year or two or three or five? What are you building here? A fucking mud? Not fucking usually signing people for your contract. House. What's that? I'm not usually signing someone to a three-year contract. <laughs> well, how much okay. are you signing then for? Give me two. Give me the test is so, up was two, two years. Oh, right, for two years then. Which one? one to the head. Two years. Who are you picking? Okay, I'll take JL. I'll take oh, JL. Wow. Well, well. There you go. Okay. okay. By the way, okay. person watching this video, title of the video, JL is better than Nerds. Just put that in the title. <laughs> put it in the title. I don't Jesus think that's even watching. that crazy. I think that's, that's hot. Even... I think inadvertently you made a hot take. That's hot. T- hot it's not hot than man, but it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. Anyway, so what was the rest of your answer? You you would you would take JL over Nerds apparently. So what's the conclusion of the roster? Did they just Navi win in your mind slightly? If you if you if you don't include Coach, I think Heroic's got a better roster. If you don't include Coach, if you include Coach, Navi's got the better roster. Okay. That's yeah. Fair enough. Blade 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 is better. Blade's the best coach right now. Blade's okay. the best coach. I'm with you. But yeah. like, it's that, like you're not. Is that a hot take? Is that a but hot why take? would you consider that? Like you're still looking towards CSGO as well. Navi won the fucking CS2 major, and you still think they, the the heroic has a better lineup. Like how is that even a thing? Wait, go go player for player for me right now, because go no, player no, for player. No, 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 player. I just went player. player. For, okay, so you pick team. So you pick team. So you Mali, pick nerd, for, so you're you pick, building players. You're building team. Team for team. Who is better? Oh well, obviously Navi oh, has oh, proven oh, more. Obviously, Navi, yes. No, okay. The thing is, it, I was thinking when when Thorin says roster, I think of like player matchup player, yeah, player, exactly. matchup player, player yes. matchup player, player matchup player. If I think of the whole team, Navi's obviously yeah, the better don't team. Don't play fucking fantasy football then. This is a fucking team sport here. It's not well, tennis. It's not fucking the difference swimming. between the word roster and team. It's I just like I draw swimming. a line. It's just a fucking team game. You need to look team. Teams are winning championships. It's not fucking JL or Nerds. Or Coaches else. help win championships. Coaches help win championships. But if I'm not, if they I'm are not including part of a Blade, team. Yeah. 
They're part of a team too. I don't want to know. How did I end up in a call where Kassad's going, yes, the coach is a part of a team. And the mouse like, they can win, you know. What the fuck are we even talking about right now? <laughs> How far gone is this conversation? <laughs> so anyway, what is your conclusion at the end? Like, Heroic can't make a final Maui? Uh, I, don't, I think I think Kixan has a lot to learn. I think Kixan has a lot to okay. learn. Kixan, Kixan will be the... Co- He'll be one of the best IGLs of 2025. I don't think it's happening this year. I don't think he's. I don't think he's there yet. Because for so me, take... for me, I actually think that grouping was fair after that blast pass. I think Kixon and Shui are in the same sort of a class of people, you know. So I expect yeah. it's possible he can become a Shui, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like, say listen, this. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna say this. Like, like Kixan got wildly overrated because he no. looks smart. He got he because he looks smart. Because he, he looks, looks like really a nerd. smart. Right. Okay. He, he looks like a nerd. Like he it's does. the same thing he that happened to true. Neilan. Okay. It's the same thing that happened to Neilan. <laughs> Neilan got way know. overrated <laughs> because they're skinny guys with round glasses. Okay, this happens all the time. The Reddit the redditors love the skinny guy with the the round glasses because they oh, see God. themselves. I've just realized. Hell. No wonder Twist is trying to become IGL. He's already got the glasses. <laughs> skinny guy. You fucking hell. Yeah, oh, exactly. No. Dude, they just it's too late. they just look at themselves and they think, I'm smart. I'm smart. So they Oh no, do dude. Yeah. No, here's I'll actually confirm your theory. Here's why your theory's definitely right. No wonder they hated Blame F as IGL. Exactly. Looks like, looks like a bully. Looks like exactly. a jock. There's no way he could, the there's no way he could be smart. The Listen, oh, that, that's why that's listen. why everyone discredited Boomage. Dude, the listen. whole thing was that everybody was like, that guy's not a real IGL. He's not a real IGL. He's great. He's great. Here's how Boomage won the major. Right. Obviously, in the short term, he needed some sort of external force to overclock his brain. Sorry, what did he say? So, so what did he say? So... By the way, did you see? <laughs> and at that time, he just really needed to win a lot of money. You have to understand, well, guys. He needed a yeah. lot of money. Someone was, there was to. someone Minecrafted in his fucking area, gold digging. You know, By the way, did you guys Diamonds. see Boomish now? <laughs> Did you see Boomish now? By the way, everyone's going to think... Skinnier. By the way, as a yeah, joke... Someone, By the way, he actually looks really good. Fair play to me. He actually yeah, did do yeah, that yeah. thing where he really yeah. lose the weight. Also, secondly, someone take a clip of that and make a shorts because they're going to think it's that that AI talk about Minecraft, aren't they? I actually did for real talk about Minecraft. That was a real reference, guys. So enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Just use it. It's all good. Uh, 